So today I thought we'd just kind of open the game folder um, and have a look at the different kinds of files that you see in there. Yes. Uh, it's, you know, because you know, a lot of these file types can be quite intimidating when they're just, you know, random extensions that you have, you, you, have, you know, you have no idea what they are and then all the kind of extra extensions they put on top of them. And because they're also similar between the different From Software games, I think it's really worth checking them out. Yeah, I'm intimidated. So, uh, well, is it? I guess it's convenient that I happen to unpack, or are we looking at like data files, the B BDTs, or no, really, not much to see if you haven't unpacked. Okay. So yeah, those those big data files that are many gigabytes large, yeah. they just have you know all the other files in the game glued together. Almost all of them, as we saw, regulation.bin is one exception that they left outside that big mm -hmm. set of binders. Yeah. And all UXM does is. A, unpack those files to the loose folders that you can see now, which are very reminiscent of past games, if you take a look in the folders of you know games like Dark Souls 1. And the second thing they do is edit the Elden Ring executable to load from those unpacked files, rather right. than look, looking inside these big BDT files. Uh -huh. But yeah, not much to say about UXM other than that. Yeah. Um, you know, you really, you don't have much. You can you, you can open those BDTs in like Notepad if you want, or Hex Editor. And you, <laughs> It'll take like 10 it. minutes to open. <laughs> But yeah, 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 and you can do your modding that way. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, you have to be able to just visually pass compression as well, but you know that if you're at that notepad level, then it wouldn't be a, an extra challenge. <laughs> okay, so let's see. We've got all these folders, and um, people might recognize them because we've done a lot of mods where we mm -hmm. we basically just paste over the files, and then there you go. So like, I know like met like the MSG is for a lot of like text, right? And then. You've got, um, where was the, where was the audio? Oh, sound. Yeah. That's what we've been doing for the Lobos SFX mm -hmm. and all that, all these files in there. So, well, yeah, what do you exactly. think is uh, good to take a look at first? So, yeah, we can look at the message files first, because that's probably okay. a good example of this. There are two very generic file types I want to point out first. Mm. Uh, if we just go into the, the Ingus, English US folder ah. here, that's where the English text is. There we go. And yeah, so right here you can see these .dcx files and you'll see a lot of .dcx files in every game since I think it was in Dark Souls 2. Um, and all that is is it, it indicates that the file's been compressed. And usually it's with a standard kind of zlib compression, which is very easy to undo. That's a very public sort of compression method. Mm -hmm. um, but since Sekiro and now in Elden Ring, some of these DCX files use a um, kind of patented third-party compression technique called and get ready for it. Oodle Kraken. What it? Boodle? <laughs> Oodle. O-O-D-L-E. Oodle Kraken. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So Oodle is a big package of different compression methods, and Kraken is the one that they used. I, I think it's the most kind of famous and popular. Okay. And if you go back to the root game folder, you'll see mm. a DLL in there next to the executable called oo 2 core uh -huh. underscore six. Yeah. So that is Oodle. That's the Oodle DLL. It's the exact same file as you'll find in Sekiro. And some of our tools like Yapt, which can edit params, you know, we looked at that last week, um, or Yabba, which unpacks these binders, which we'll take a look at in a second. They will only work for these newer games if you give that DLL to those modding tools so they can actually use the Kraken technique to decompress and recompress those files. So that's a small change that Sekiro introduced. Nice. Um, could you briefly... I know a DLL is a dynamically linked library, right? And uh, But what, what exactly does a DLL do? So a DLL just contains extra machine level functions that the game executable is capable of calling. So, you know, when you run the game, it's going to load some basic system DLLs. You can see some others in here. Um, mm -hmm. I see Souls formats, interestingly. Uh, I think that's from the survival mod because <laughs> yeah, you've got the survival mod here. So that's yeah. a DLL used by my survival mod executable. And yeah, so the game, you know, it, it won't load any DLL it sees in the folder. And right. then you have things like Mod Engine kind of adding these wrappers to make them load any DLL it finds in a subfolder or something like that, often by overriding D input 8, which is kind of a very a default, very kind of back end level input DLL that if, it, if the game finds that next to it, it will use that one instead. And if the one that you've supplied to the game just happens to tell it to load an mm -hmm. arbitrary extra DLL or a whole folder of them, and that's how a lot of mods get their get their grip into the game. Nice. Yeah. Very nice. So the Oodle DLL here just contains functions that I imagine it's basically got two functions that the game uses, which is compress and decompress. 
and that's all it's used for. All right. Yeah. Good to know. So if, if we go back to the message folder, yes, um, and we kind of, I think it's worth uh, for today's session downloading Yabba, which I just mentioned, which yeah. hasn't changed since Sekiro. You can find it on Nexus. One B. Oh, Nexus. Uh, two Bs. Er. Oh. Nexus. Yeah. Yabba. Let's see. Oh, Yabber. Oh, sorry. Yabber. Yeah, oh, Yabber. Yeah, that's, sorry, that's my accent. Well, I th yeah. No, I was <laughs> thinking ER Elden Ring. I was like, okay, yeah, Yabba ER. All right. Yeah, Sekiro. There we go. Okay. Yabba, mate. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yabba, my icing. Oh, that's a Half Life 2 thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. So this is a very awesome general purpose tool. Again, made by TKGP, who made Souls Formats and Yapped, the base version of Yapped. And yeah, it just contains these three executables and one of them, context, if you double click that, mm -hmm. uh, it will add Yabba and Yabba.dcx to your right click menu if you press R to register. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. Nice. And now so if now we go and right here. click, exactly, and we go right click on one of those files, you'll see the Yabba options pop up. There you go. Yeah. So there's two options, uh, the Yabba.dcx function all it will do is remove that DCX compression. So it will open the file, it'll decompress it, and then just dump a decompressed version of it next to the file. Okay. Uh, you want to use that in some cases, like there are some file types that Yabba can't handle that have DCX on top of them. If you just run the Yabba, not only will it decompress if it's if it's needed, but it will actually unpack this file, which is what we'll, we'll talk about next. Uh, this is what's called a BND file. There's a bunch of variants of these, BND. the file extension, is usually something BND, and then usually with a .dcx at the end. BND just stands for binder, and literally all these files are doing is gluing other files together. Hmm. And the reason it does that is that, you know, if you compress multiple files at once, you can get more efficient compression than just compressing one at a time. Because, you know, you can extract patterns that might exist across multiple files when you're doing your compression. Gotcha. Yeah, Sekiro so that text DFLT. file. <laughs> <laughs> yep, there's your compression type. So again, still being used in Elden Ring. Yeah. Um, and yeah, this file is used by Yabba when we want to repack this file. Okay. Uh, it will check this to find out which files in this folder that were just unpacked it should put into that BND, and then it will reapply the DCX compression. And yeah, you often get a lot of nested subfolders here because it's just mimicking the structure of the file path inside the binder. Makes sense. And then right at the bottom here, we have the FMG files, which you might have played around with before. These are very simple files, some of the simplest in the game. I don't even think the format's changed in the last 10 years, possibly. But uh, all they do is contain IDs for text. And um, you can actually nice. right-click on any of these, and you can use Yabba, and you can convert these into XML files. And you can just use Yabba to edit text. No, Ooh, no extra yeah. program needed. Nice. Yep. There you go. Well, there you go. A lot of them are null, um, so the percent null just indicates it's an empty entry. And then yeah, here, here you go. So, text modding is done. You know. I... <laughs> wow. Okay. That's uh, yeah. That's pretty straightforward. Um, so yeah. this is uh, this is the info for uh, items you pick up. Goods. Yeah. What we said last. That's time. right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So <laughs> like we saw last time, goods are that any item that you don't wear on your body is pretty much a good. Uh, all the key items, all the spirit ashes in Elden Ring, all the consumables, throwables, things like that. And so this and yeah, might all of them maybe fit here. These will appear. The reason there's multiple is because you, you might look at the item description and it'll show up there, or you might have like the detailed description and it might show up there. There's a lot of a lot of different um, you know entries for it though. Uh, that's just all the upgrade levels for the spirit ash, I believe. Because oh, you have, that would make sense. Uh, Ten upgrades, yeah. So yeah, usually okay, with the okay. upgrades, yeah, you'll just get a bunch of plus ones, plus twos to the base ID. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. And I think, yeah, info, this is the kind of little caption that appears when you've highlighted the item, but you haven't kind of opened the detailed description yet. Okay, uh, gotcha. the, Those detailed descriptions are called captions, which oh, are okay. Separate. in a much larger file. Yeah. Caption, yeah. Yeah. And you can see nice. how large that file is, almost a meg. Yeah, because so, it's usually like a paragraph of descriptive info exactly. and the little lower bits and that. Yeah, okay. and depending on if they change the code or not, you're gonna get that duplicated for every reinforcement level of like spirit. Oh, ashes, nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They don't do that for weapons. They kind of, you know, the engine recognizes that the weapon description shouldn't change when you reinforce it, so it just uses the base ID. But I think for goods, um, upgraded goods, I think Elden Ring might be the first game to use kind of reinforced goods of those those spirit ashes. Oh, spirit so ashes, yeah. Yeah, because some of the ashes, yeah, give you more. They summon more dudes at a higher level, so 
mm -hmm. I guess they reflect that. Yeah, yeah, cool. they could they could actually. So there we go. That's text. A lot of the text that we often play around with in mods is not in this uh, this binder file. We unpacked item here, mm -hmm. and as you can predict, that's where all the item info goes. And we can see those subtypes here. Gem, by the way, I think we looked at this last week. Gem is actually Arts of War now. Is that what it's called? Arts of, of War. War. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, they, it's still called gems. Uh, and then in menu is where all the text that isn't related to items goes. And that includes my favorite text category, event text, mm. which is all of the generic messages <laughs> that appear in dialogues or pop-ups, um, not, not dialogue itself. That's in its own file, but it's a very large file. Talk event text for there. map or just both? Even yeah, so that in, well. in Elden Ring, and maybe in earlier games, I'm not sure, but yeah, they've, they've now split it up into event text that's used for the map. So that's, yeah, prompts you might encounter when interacting with objects and things, mm. which you can see here. And then for talk, which I think is more like tutorial messages and things that the game just kind of throws at you at, at different points in the game. <laughs> cool. So yeah, if you wanted to mess with any of those, you can see, wouldn't be too hard to do either. You found a simple map. Yeah, this is cool. <laughs> Yeah, and this is where a lot of the cut content uh, we immediately find because, you know, unused text oh. is very ripe for juicy cut content lore because, you know, a lot of cut content has my, some raw files somewhere that are difficult to interpret or they're all in Japanese. But yeah, if they cut anything at the last second that already had an English translation attached to it, often we'll find that here in the text. Nice. Yeah. Very cool. One more one that's probably worth taking a peek at is uh, NPC names, which contains... I don't remember if, I think there might be an item text. Yeah, that's that one's an item, funnily enough. Oh, okay. NPCs uh, and not yeah, items. Data. There we go. NPC name, yeah, there we go. Yeah. Yabbit. And... Yabbit. Yabbit. <laughs> yeah, so here's all the names that pop up for NPCs, whether it's, you know, showing their position on the map, it probably uses it, or the boss health bar text ah. would look this up as well. Oh, nice. <laughs> so yeah, if you want to, you know, if you've just downloaded Elden Ring, you've never played it, and it occurs to you that you immediately want to know the name of every spoiler boss in the game, you could just open this file and <laughs> take a peek. <gasps> no, wait, Soldier of Godric. So this is not, this is not where you would see, wait, you said boss uh, health should be in here. Should yeah, be? Yeah, it should be in here. Uh, just try, it might be case sensitive. Is oh, it maybe. Uh, it doesn't say match case. Uh, Godric? What the? Maybe I. Maybe this is. Maybe the. Maybe they've been moved into a different file. Is oh, there one called. It's searching up. Boss That's names why. or anything? It was searching up for some reason. Oh, right. Default. Yeah, notepad. <laughs> there it is. Soldier of Godric. So mm -hmm. if we change this when we're in the Soldier Godric fight, then it will just. That updates. Here, Soldier, exactly. Soldier yep. of God. There we go. Save. <laughs> Done. There we go. Finally, uh, <laughs> yeah. Putting the, the finishing chef's kiss on last week's mod. Excellent. Excellent. I yep. like, and then I, when you've made your change, you can right-click the XML and run Yabba on that. Mm, uh, okay, and then that'll just repackage it? Yeah, exactly, yep. And you'll see it, it will automatically generate a backup, uh, just in case. And that's, okay, and then it's, the FNG is now updated, so... Yeah, and then the last step is to repack the item MSG BND oh. file. Message binder. Oops. And then um, we'll do the same thing. And we do the folder? Folder yeah, and Yabba. That's right, the folder. Okay. Yeah, folder and run Yabba. Okay. That's it. And Yabba will look for that kind of manifest file that's in the just inside that folder, and it will um, repack nice. all those files into the binder. One thing to note here is if you want to add new files to these binders, which you know we do a lot in modding as well, you have to add the name of that file to the Yabba XML so it knows to grab it. Otherwise, it will just ignore it. I see. Uh, yeah. Let's see where uh, where was that XML? It's back in the. Uh, it should be just in the in the first level of the, the unpacked message binder folder. Let's see here. Next to the folder called oh, GR. Oh, inside there, you're right, 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 yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah that's it. Okay, so you just kind of co copy paste this file and then just change that to the new the new file name that you created? Exactly. For in this case, with the message binder, uh, it wouldn't really work because the game is, you know, hard coded about which text FMGs to use and look up. Sure, sure. But sure. in another one, like say you wanted to add a new visual effect or a new character model or a new map model, you would do this and you just, uh, yeah, increment the ID by one and just chuck it in the bottom of the file, really. Nice. Sometimes the IDs, you know, they're kind of templated. So 
um, a visual effects file. It might use IDs up to 1000 for the effect, the particle effect file. And then it might use IDs in like the million range for the textures that those particles use and things like that. So you kind of have to be a little bit careful about the system they use for the IDs. Gotcha. But generally you can just plus one and yeah, just copy paste a new file entry at the bottom. Uh, and as you see, can imagine, oh. this is something we often do through scripting, right? If we wanted to do this. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, let's see, Lady Luna Viper says, speaking of bosses, I have a question about adding additional bosses. What would I need to do to add a second health bar if I wanted to say double the number of bosses? If you know off the top of your head. Yeah, totally. Um, and this is exactly what Catalesh did, uh, you know, in the like enemy onslaught. Yep. Yep. for Bloodborne and stuff, right? So the first, yeah, there's a few files you need to change. The first is the map file, right? If you want a second instance of the boss, you have to open the map file and create that second instance and, you know, put put that boss model where you want it to appear in the game. Hmm. Uh, that's the easy part, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> but the harder part is through event scripting, which is the part of modding I enjoy most. I know a few other modders who are probably in the chat right now do, like the Fifth Matt and George and Hot Pocket Remix. We're all mm -hmm. big time event scripters. And that's where all of the boss fight logic is handled. That includes disabling the boss before you enter the arena. It includes walking through the fog gate for the older games that actually used fog gates. Nowadays, it's kind of like, uh, actually Elden Ring went back to fog gates, I think. But in a game like Sekiro, a lot of the bosses, you just, just enter the arena because we're single player. Um, you have to enable the health bar through an event script. There's an instruction that will just take the text ID you give it and it will take the character and use their health to display a health bar at the bottom. And you can do that for anyone. You know, there's nothing special about bosses mm -hmm. as, as Soldier of Godric kind of demonstrates already. <laughs> um, and then you have to monitor for when the boss is killed and then you disable all that stuff and you play the boss death effect and you disable the music and things like that. So all of those are handled through Kind of very templated event scripts because for most boss fights they're identical but then some bosses will have extra things like tail cuts oh, or yeah. um you know on and smile you can imagine you know has to manage the different yeah. ways that fight can go and so fights that kind of handle branching logic like that will have a lot of custom event scripts to handle that and phase transitions that's a big one that you'll see a lot as well and handling the music change all that stuff it's done through yeah. event scripting and just carefully turning things on and off basically <laughs> and, and waiting for things to die yeah, that sounds like the sort of thing I'd be real interested in too, but uh, I'm sure that's uh, <laughs> uh well, when we get to event scripting, yeah. uh yeah, that that would be definitely one of the first. It's actually a kind of a very approachable tutorial or example to do when you get into event scripting because the boss fights are so uh again, they're like templates basically and so yeah. you can just you can copy a lot of what you see. We can create that new boss in the map files and then you, know, you have to assign it an ID so you can refer to that ID in the event script. But then basically you're good to go. You can just copy and Figure, figure out how it works and things will go disastrously wrong of course because it's a very sensitive scripting system and it's easy to make mistakes but um often it leads to hilarious results at least <laughs> maybe maybe some that you keep uh so <laughs> uh, we repackaged all this stuff so we should be able to see our change in game right i believe so yeah it should be loading through uxm so let's see yep. where was our didn't we have a character we were doing there? Maybe... Uh... <laughs> Did we create a separate kind of save file folder or anything? Uh, let me see. I'll just I'll just run to Soldier of Godric again. Because I may have been... When I was trying to get the survival mod going, I might have, like, you know, loaded some older saves just to see if it... I don't know. Save data was some, somehow linked to it. But... Um, oh, Test. Yeah. Pretty sure I named him Test last time. We'll do a quick, just... quick run here. Sounds good. I Matt do. just mentioned that for oh. the enemy randomizer, there's a lot of boss stuff he does with that, and you know, like the the name generation, even with the, the funny mix and match names, <laughs> he knows a lot. He knows a lot about how the bosses work, particularly in these later games, which I haven't nice. personally looked at yet. Nice, very cool. Um, I like the idea of whenever it is applicable, and we learn an, a new thing that we just kind of continue to build on Soldier of God now and uh, use what we've learned in a, in a way to morph that fight into who knows what by yep. the end of it. It's very fitting. Um, I mean, aside from the little snafu we had last week where because Soldier of Godric is so generic, it's actually kind of hard to <laughs> only modify him. Yeah. But aside from that, the uh, the whole Stranded Graveyard is kind of a perfect modding tutorial setup. So thank you, Miyazaki, for throwing us a bone. <laughs> we don't even talk about this boss. Oh, yeah. Here. <laughs> yeah, because uh, the whole, like, you don't die, you actually just, you just end at one health, right? And then they play, like, cutscene. 
Exactly. Yeah. So I'd bet I'd bet a fair bit of money that the event script for that fight is also making the player immortal while the fight's going on, and then it has kind of a custom cutscene trigger for when you reach one HP. Do you know I'm how? Sure do you know the didn't. bug with it that you can just like Alt F4 and <laughs> load back? No, in? but I imagine there's a way around that if you were if you were so inclined to repair all the little bugs in Elden Ring, you could probably go into the event <laughs> scripts and, and figure out exactly why that happens. Yeah, if you Alt F4 during the cutscene and load back in. Uh, oops, I passed Soldier Goddard. That was autopiloting. Um, <laughs> then when you load back in, you're just infinite health, and he can't kill you. Like you, oh. he can just hit you as much as you want. They don't dis they don't remove that invulnerability until I guess the after cutscene the cutscene or something. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> Very interesting. Yeah. I wonder how it works with falling off a cliff. They must have some kind of box trigger uh, as well that, as an alternative for for getting through the fight. Yeah. Yeah, I think they yeah they must just check to see if the the fight is started because I mean I don't get why they wouldn't just check if it's check if you die while the fight's active, and then that would handle yeah. both cases, right? Yeah. I guess they didn't want to risk because the cutscene kind of takes a few frames to fade in. If they disabled the immortality during that fade in before the cutscene started, and then you got hit by some you know extra little hitbox, you might <laughs> yeah, actually die. So. Just, yeah, break it. Yeah, interesting, interesting uh, kind of situation, really. <laughs> One thing that I do find myself doing surprisingly often in mods, when you want something like that to happen upon, quote, player death, yeah, kind of the first thing you do is just make the player immortal, and then death becomes kind of yours to command as you will um, yeah, when the player reaches 1 HP. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> once the player actually dies, a whole bunch of internal game systems take over. They just auto. Kind of, yeah, exactly. Okay. You, you can't really do what you want. And you get things like, you know, death cam when you're falling and things like that. Right, yeah. Okay, here we go. Soldier of God Rick. Oh, we should name him Rick. There he is, Soldier of God. <laughs> I don't, so here's the thing is I don't think he, he has the changes from before. Uh, so yeah. he's... Yeah, he, he just... He wants to be the Soldier of God. <laughs> he's normal old Soldier of God right now, but, um, you know, if we wanted to go make those changes, we could. Okay. Let's yeah. see, where are these files again? Oh, yeah. Are we going to keep uh, doing message stuff right now or moving on? I think we can move on. Okay. Um, unless, you know, obviously, if you want to, if we do any little tutorial projects that involve editing text, I think you know how to do that now. I think I do, yeah. Um, and yeah, it's pretty nice. One of the tricky things, you know, there are, there are a bunch of different, quote, menu text files. So if you wanted to edit something that is kind of a little, might be a little harder to predict which FMG it's going to end up in. Yeah. They do all have English names now, at least, so it's a little easier nice. to figure out where it might be. In the original Dark Souls, they all had Japanese names that we had to translate. Oh boy. Yeah. And yeah, just a bunch of different places that some things can turn up. Like I remember one in Daughters of Ash way back in the day, finding where the text that describes the starting class gifts took me like an hour. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's just tucked wow. away in a completely random kind of miscellaneous text binder. <laughs> Dang. Uh, and it really drove me nuts. Yep. So yeah, that, that BND format that we just unpacked with Yabba, uh, you'll see those files everywhere. Mm. And again, they're not literally called .BNDs. They'll be .something BND, so like MSG BND mm. or CHR BND for character files. If you take a peek into the, the character folder here, you'll see a lot of that. Yep. These are binders that contained, uh, there are animations in the Annie BNDs and there are uh, 3D models in the CHR BNDs. Mm. Okay, nice. Yeah. So if you wanted to do a model replacement, you'd be looking at unpacking those CHR BNDs. Whereas if you wanted to edit animations, like in the, the Havoc format that the games use, which is a lot more difficult than you'd open the Annie BNDs. But yeah. of course, the best tools for these, like Mia Maritis's animation studio, just handle all that for you, right? You just point, you point them to the model ID that you want to edit and it will unpack and repack all of these files. That's awesome. What is the, um, while we're doing this stuff, like uh, what's kind of the ID for the player character? Is that something that's, consistent across or not really absolutely yeah yep. all zeros c okay. zero 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 nice yeah there we are so yeah we we kind of go back and forth about what exactly to call that model because you know calling it the human model kind of is confusing when we talk about hollow and human in dark right. souls one and, yeah uh, and beyond and we, the player model kind of doesn't capture the fact that all the npcs can use it as well like patches and uh, Solaire and everyone uses the same model. Mm. So I don't know what we call it these days. Probably just model zero. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, the, the player model. Yeah, player model, yeah. yeah. So the player model is, is very unique among all these models. Most of these are just, you know, fully baked models. But the player model, not only does it have all the different player animations baked into those various, you can see it's got a lot of any BND files here, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. it um, it's just the naked model. 
and it handles, you know, face generation is handled through params. You get all those face dimensions and sliders. All the armor that they can wear is handled through different models in the parts folder from the root folder. Yeah, yeah. So they're very, they're designed to be very modular. And so they need extra information from params okay. in order to determine their final appearance. Nice. Yeah, so they behave funny that way. Interesting. Um, yeah, we could we could take a look in there as well if you wanted in the parts folder because sure. that's another yep, common I know, place. I know when I've done mods, they're, you know, like <laughs> freaking Dante Sekiro mod or whatever, you're generally pasting in parts and maybe, maybe the CHR as well. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So these are just simple containers for 3D models, basically. And all of the different parts have IDs and BD, that's like body and AM is arms and you have M and F for the, mm. the gender variants as well. And yeah, you just got to figure out exactly where you're looking and right. there are a lot of cool tools that will help you help out with that. You can right. see a lot of them are quite small as well. You know, often you're just dealing with a little gauntlet. And again, these are all compressed with that .dcx extension. So gotcha. yeah, a lot of layers of compression and binding and compression and binding yeah. ultimately happen in the, in the game files. That's a lot of stuff. So when the game starts, does it uncompress these things or does it just load mm -hmm. them without somehow without uncompressing them no it has to decompress them okay okay yeah it's it's very quick and yeah it will some files are loaded when you launch the game yeah and some are only loaded as needed when you load into a certain map or you know the map's always kind of loading things in the background depending on how close you are to where those things are going to be used and things like that so it doesn't very try cool. to do it all at once like when you're loading the game that would create a gigantic ram yeah. footprint <laughs> but um yeah, it does decompress on the fly in order to interpret these data. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. So, yeah, what else um, do you want to take a peek at today? The, the tools for map editing in Elden Ring, I'm not quite sure what the state of those is. I should have looked into it. I know that there's kind of an experimental build of Catalash's Map Studio, I believe, that at least lets you look at the map data for Elden Ring, but I don't think it supports file writing yet. Okay. Uh, maybe one of the other modders in chat can correct me. Maybe we can pencil that in for a future a future session where um we can get a bit of a handle on those tools and so for the map editing that would actually be for like placing sp like a spawn point for an npc or something like that exactly scrub milker says it does work fairly well now and it does write so that would be cool too Ooh. even just being able to open and visualize that do you want to take a stab at that, that would be yeah cool. absolutely <laughs> is that on github or that. yeah uh, maybe scrub if you're in the chat do you want to um <laughs> Let us know where the fastest place to get it is. Some of these tools are only um, thousand dogs, yeah. Only on the Discord right now. Oops. Tools yeah, I'm. I'm a, oh, tools and resources. Wait, is it in the uh, the normal Discord or a different Discord? In but, the normal server name Discord. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's find it. Let's take a look. Oh, I was already in here apparently. Pin. Uh, there's mod engine. UXM, okay, not pinned. Looks like Might Catalash be. from May 21 is the latest Let's see. message I can see, I think. Does May 21 sound right to the modders in chat? Okay, Nothing later than that. Six. Wait, oh, uh, oh, <laughs> that goes way, way far back. Haram Studio, oh, the latest one I see is Map Studio Alpha 11. ER hmm. Test 2 is what they're saying. Let's see. Yeah, ER test two. Uh, or Elden Ring test two. Uh, oh, yeah, there we go. Map cool. Studio Elden Ring test two. Although, this is, looks like just uh, updates and not the actual. Let's see. If you, It's Close. in the message just below that one. I think he, he oh, re uploaded gosh. it very quickly. Gosh, where'd it go? Oh, here we go. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Nice. So it's worth mentioning while we while we kind of set this up just how maps work in general so okay. the game world is split up into a bunch of different maps in all the games those maps were kind of very obvious because usually they, they're the ones with you know unique names like uh filing shrine undead berg and so on some of those areas emerged so undead berg and undead parish they're in the same map file for example all these map files have ids and those ids are broken up into kind of four numbers so the kind of a hierarchical system. So the first number represents an area which can contain multiple maps. Uh, the, the famous .NET Core. Huzzah! <laughs> uh, let's see. Run desktop apps, right? I presume. 
think that's what X64 we want. X64 yeah. for desktop, desktop. Yeah, X64. Oh yeah, Hot Pockets, totally right. You memorize all the map IDs very quickly. Oh, okay. And yeah, in like uh, in Dark Souls 1, I think it's uh, 17 maps broken up into okay. areas and blocks. And in Elden Ring, that all changes because we've got this big overworld suddenly. So we've got a lot of map files now, as you can imagine. The game world is slightly larger than anything FromSoft has done before. Yeah. Nice. And it works using a tiling system. And I'll send you the link to that as well. There's a really cool Ooh. image that uh, generated from all of the info that I think it was fifth map who found it. I'll just send this to you on Discord. Awesome. Yeah, I haven't touched Map Studio at all, so this is just this is all foreign to me. So you might need to get a new project here. Okay. Ooh. Project name, uh, best mod ever. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no, we'll just call it Soldier of God test. We're just, gonna put, God. So, we're just gonna put Soldier of God everywhere. That's what we're gonna do. Boss fights too. Perfect. <laughs> One of the easy things you can do in maps is model replacements as well, which is a big part of oh, nice. enemy randomizer. Nice. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Game EXE, let me point it. Ta-da. Save partial regulation. Partial params require merging before use in-game. I don't... Do I need to do any of these checks? I don't think so. Yeah. So Map Studio has kind of a param editor built into it. Oh, but okay. I, I imagine it only supports some of the param types right now. And so it's saying that if you use it, it will write... Ooh. Oh, there you go. So oh, we just talked about this before, right? Yeah. So the map files are compressed with Oodle Kraken. And oh, we're gonna need to put we're gonna need to just copy paste that DLL to next to the map studio. Gotcha, executable. gotcha, gotcha. That makes sense. Mm. Yeah, us, we ask, us modders are, you know, skirting legal boundaries already, but Oops. when it comes to Oodle, that, that's where we draw the line. We're not distributing Oodle <laughs> DLLs. That's too scary. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, let's see. Uh where oh no, did I close my I think I closed my map studio. There we go instead of yabber so after yabber is added to the context menus you you don't really need to run on its own or are there other things it can do uh no you, you pretty much don't need it anymore pretty good okay. it anywhere from right click nice. yeah unless you were writing a script and you wanted to call yabber in the script onto certain files then you would kind of refer to that executable path i'm just gonna call it test forget it <laughs> it's gonna be more much more than just soldier of God, probably exactly uh yeah desktop mm -hmm, mm -hmm. game exe this is exciting i have not seen this myself yet elden ring in map studio your selected project directory is already a project uh, you oh, it it's desktop. Oh god. Okay. All right. Uh, there. Um, hold on. Map. Map. Studio. Test. There you go. Whoops. <laughs> Is not valid. Do I need to create the directory first? Maybe. Let me see. Mm, possibly. New folder. Map. Studio. Studio. Test. I think it's working. I like the pause. It's a reassuring pause. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, cool. We got labels okay. now, too. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of labels here. Yeah, so you can see how many different map segments there are in here. And, you know, 80% of them are overworld tiles, as we call it. So okay. if you check the Discord, I just sent you an image in oh. Discord straight from the Souls modding wiki. Ooh. It's a big image, oh, so yeah, wow. best to, yeah, best yeah, to download yeah. and zoom in. So the overworld in Elden Ring is broken up into three different tile sizes. You've got big tiles, which are the ones with white text here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You've got medium tiles with blue text. There's four of those per big tile. And then there are four small tiles in green text per medium tile. Wow. And you can tell what size it is by the last number. So the small tiles end in 0, zero which has been left out of the green numbers here. The blues end in 01, and the whites end in 02. And That's all of these would start with 60. So any, any map ID that starts with 60 is going to be part of the, the overworld. So yeah, this is how it works. Mm. Um, most of the actual entities are put into the smallest level of file here, I believe, the, the green tiles. And 
very a few things are put into the white tiles. So the sites of grace, I believe, are in the white tiles. Matt knows a lot more about this than me, or probably anyone else at this point. But yeah, so it's worth noting here for the survival mod, in order to de detect which area you're in, uh -huh, in order yeah. to apply temperature effects and diseases and stuff, yep. I kind of, for every area, the game doesn't have a, a concept of area built in. You know, the collisions tell the game what area it belongs to, but I can't really check all those. So I made a list of every small tile in every area in order to figure out um, where you are. And so the event scripts for survival mod will check where which small tile you're standing in and those will, those will be assigned to you know, Leonia effect. or Caleb. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So I've got this kind of jagged yeah, sort they're of kind of out, blocky, outline. Not, yeah. <clears throat> exactly. All I've right. got this jagged pixelated out uh, definition of each area implicit nice. in the survival mod event scripts. Nice. Wow. So, I think, so you yeah. said you said entities are placed typically within the green, the smallest. Exactly. So entities and the, the, any spawning, any any material spawns and enemy spawns and all that stuff. I think so. I'm not not as sure okay. about the materials. Okay. okay. Um, yeah, but yeah, this is on top of what we call legacy dungeons in Elden Ring, which behave like classic maps, and they all have IDs lower than sixty. Uh, oh yeah, someone pointed out a lot of these tiles just float off in the ocean. So uh, yeah, not so much going on out there. But I remember playing the game for the first time, and I just wasn't sure if there was going to be a boat at some point because oh. there was a lot of cool icons in the ocean. Yeah, there's a mod idea for you: Elden Ring nautical Ooh. adventure. Yeah, what are all these things up here? There's like these dots, these little shrines, kind of off of the Halig tree. <laughs> mm, exactly. I don't. I don't even mm. remember seeing those towers in the game. Yeah, I'm me sure neither. Interesting. Okay. So this Dang. tells us which ID we need to open in Map Studio if we want to see a particular section of the map. Nice. And I'm not sure what Map Studio is like these days, but depending on your computer and your, your GPU, I don't recommend loading too many of these maps simultaneously. Okay. Particularly the big ones because yeah, they, they, they're pretty dense data-wise. Well, I've got a 3090, so bring it on, I say. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. And I then, yeah, we can also right. look at the legacy dungeons. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> um so let's see i think i'm yeah so i'm looking at at uh storm bale here mm -hmm. so you were saying that they have ids like the map ids should be kind of be traceable like similar map ids yeah. to the to storm vale or whatever like all the pieces of storm vale i mean but that's just for the overworld storm vale castle as a map has its own id it's its oh, own thing okay. entirely I yeah gotcha. just I like gotcha. um you know anor londo from it from a previous game then that those those kinds of legacy dungeons sit as maps inside and yeah you can see it's the yeah, very first one very first one yeah yeah so nice. if you right click on that and you load it let's see load map so it's the game is you know that the program is unpacking all of those right right nice. now there you go yeah, so here's margit margit spawn margit fight oh you, you can make that a uh, viewport window bigger by the way as well uh let's see dragging or just like yeah, you can drag things around. Like we don't need quite as much space on the left in particular. Don't have any grabbies? Oh, it doesn't. It does. I see. I see. It doesn't change <laughs> to a uh, arrows or anything. There yeah. we go. Nice. Perfect. So yeah, lots happening here. <laughs> I love all the overlapping regions as well. And yeah, you can <laughs> see the birds in the sky. Those will be objects, I nice. suspect. Birds for scale, of course. Yep. You need shift to move uh, faster. Sprint. Oh yeah, that's much faster. Yeah, okay. and you can strafe with Q&A as well, I believe. Oh, yeah. Q&A goes up and down, it looks like. Oh, Q&A up and down. That's yeah. Right. yeah, not true. So all of these blue boxes we're seeing are region checks. You know, most of them, you know, some of them might be boundaries for sounds. Some of them might be just for event scripts to check where you're standing. Um, and there, yeah, you can imagine there are a few other purposes for them as well. The little yellow octahedrons are mm -hmm. points. Uh -oh. So just making those points visible. And those are for, you know, spawning particular things or defining points where characters might be warped. So I imagine some of the points in this arena are for, you know, where Margaret appears after he, he jumps down or something like that. Is that is it for death triggers by chance? No, the death no? triggers uh, will be collisions generally, okay. not boxes. Okay. Yeah. And I don't think we have collisions enabled right now. So mm. if you go to view or display up the top. Display, yep. Object you can types. choose what object oh, types you want to see. Oh, say collisions on. Let me see. I just. Oh, uh, okay. I'm guessing the we can't load Elden Ring collisions yet, probably because of the Havoc format. Would be my uh, guess. Oh, maybe. Yeah. Someone else might be able to comment on that. But of course, you know, editing geometry, 
that's something Nightfall is kind of trying to do for the first time wow, yeah. in, a, in a big mod. So it's definitely not trivial. And we are only fortunate enough to be able to do it for Dark Souls 1 because the Havoc tools for that game are kind of public or at least accessible. The, the debug build or whatever? Yeah. Or, or is that not even related? I, I think it's... um No, not the game debug build. Oh, okay, but okay. Just the fact that even Dark Souls Remastered uses Havoc like 2010, I think. And we have the tools for that. But I imagine, yeah, Hot Pocket says that's right. They use new Havoc, so they're never shown. And good luck editing them, unfortunately. But we okay. can edit the visuals of the map. And that's everything we're seeing here, all these these colored map pieces, we call them. So map pieces, are, again, are very distinct from collisions. Map pieces are purely visual. They're 3D models, relatively easy to edit, just like a character edit. Uh, and that's, you know, we're, again, we're, we're kind of doing that a lot on, on mass scale for Nightfall, kind of for the first time for a big mod. But collisions... Uh, lower resolution they're just used for walls they don't represent all the little details and the bricks and things they're typically a bit more coarse than that yep and they're also used for just detecting collision without physics so kill planes uh, camera triggers they're used for and some of them only apply physics to npcs so you have invisible barriers that enemies can't get through but right, you still right. can and things like that Makes sense. and that's used at the edges of boss arenas a lot so that's why margaret no matter how hard you try he <laughs> just won't fall to his death because there is literally an invisible wall that only works for him around the boundary of the arena i have seen him fall off but it was a very glitchy fall off you know he got to the edge in in co-op and he was like and then fell so squeezed probably squeezed through the tiniest hole yeah that they <laughs> nice <laughs> gruesome yeah so yeah, in right here, um, if if the modders in the chat are right, we can edit a lot of this stuff. Particularly if we're doing if we're doing some kind of cool creative event scripting for bosses, we might want to edit some trigger regions. Or we might want to move the boss around. So yeah, you can see Margaret right there. If we just drag him around using those gizmo arrows, you know, we can move yeah. where he starts. And we could do that for Soldier of of God right now, probably. Oh, or we could make yeah. a copy. We so yeah, a copy I, of him. I, I was just clicking on some things and the, the, some things at least, or maybe all of them have names, which is cool. So like buddy summon point seems like that's mm -hmm. where maybe if you, if you summon an ash or actually, I don't know what that would be. Yeah. I think buddies spirit ashes. So that's where buddies would appear. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. This one's just called other. So yeah. All right. So let's see if we want to do something with soldier of Godric, I guess we'll unload this map Yeah. and then load, I guess. Do we need to get the ID here? Um, uh, it won't be in this list. It will be, hang on, let me send you the link to the actual uh, reference page for all this stuff. Mm. Which, uh, fifth map, very kindly generated for us early on. The Stranded Graveyard, looks like we want M1800. I'm just taking a look at these maps. Yeah, okay, it's nice. totally, totally worth it. You can see he's listed all the sites of grace that belong to each map as well, including the overworld tiles. So if you were making a big map mod for Elden Ring, gotcha. and I certainly use this as a reference a lot for the survival mod, just you know finding out what, what is where, uh, this very indispensable page on the wiki for you. Nice. Uh, you were saying, yeah, Stranded Graveyard here, so site of grace, yeah. M18, let's see. Oops. Stranded Graveyard. Load map. Okay, so let's see. Where have we started here? Ah, okay. Yeah, the entrance from here. <laughs> yeah, I like these guys. <laughs> Good old A pose here. <laughs> Go down. Uh, we'll just follow the path all the way. See all these enemies. Nice. Mm -hmm. Nice. It's Long amazing up. seeing just how much detail they add to these games now as well. You know, even Dark Souls 1 back in the day, it, it tends to look a little bit bare or barren compared to these later games, which is one of the things we have to keep in mind when we're trying to make exciting mods for it. Uh, oh, wait, here's the bridge. I think I got lost for a second. It's a little... Uh, it can be a little tough to find your way through <laughs> here, but <laughs> mostly the same. There's the Stake of America, and then here we go. Oh, yeah. The man himself... There he is. Is that him? I, did, uh, uh, I think he starts the fight and he's walking from there. So yeah, that's probably him. I imagine that's him. I think he's the last enemy too. So um, enemy. Although I guess he's probably just kind of generic soldier after all, right? So yeah. So we can now see all the data that defines this instance of a character on the right in the properties tab here. So. 
A um, few key things to point out here, and a lot of these are, again, uh, still, they've been around for many games now. We have draw groups and display groups. They're yeah. used to determine when things should be rendered. So draw groups, they're kind of present on all of the different parts here. A part is just kind of any physical thing in the map, as opposed to an event or a, or a box. Um, okay, but not and... like a sub part of the boss? Not like a, an arm part, for example? or. Well, it depends, yeah. So for a tail cut event, for example, you'll uh -huh. have the boss who has a tail, and uh -huh. that tail can be toggled on and off using a mask in the character model. Uh, I see. And then you'll have a separate writhing cut tail that will be an entirely se separate model waiting to be enabled when you cut the tail off the boss. And then the, the tail will be warped to where you would expect it to be. Huh. But it would still be a separate part. And you can often see this in these games. Like if you load up uh, Lost Isolith, you'll see Centipede Demon, and then lined up next to him, you'll just see a bunch of arms and tails. <laughs> nice. Um, ready, ready to go. And they'll, they'll all just be disabled and then warped and enabled when needed. Very cool. Not too many tail cuts in later games, though, sadly. So probably no examples of that we can look at, I think, in Elden Ring. Yeah, I don't... Uh, I don't know that there are any tail cuts. Oh, yeah. I, I tried a lot in my first playthrough, but... I don't yeah, think me I managed too. to cut any, yeah. Okay. We never know. All right, so... And these that would be the real cut content. The draw groups d define within them what all of these objects, like all the tails, all and then the bosses themselves, or are they just for kind of instructions for that that sort of process? I guess. So, so how it typically works is that um, things can have draw groups. Uh, well, it's kind of an overlapping set check that's happening. So collisions will have display groups, and when you're standing on a collision, that's the display groups that will be active at that moment. Anything that has a draw group that is in those display groups will be rendered in that case. So just for a simple example, maybe in the boss arena, you're standing on display group 17. Most okay. of them will only actually have one display group. Anything that has draw group 17 will be rendered as okay. long as you're standing on that collision. Interesting. Now, the reason that this character has none is because there's another field that kind of assigns it as a child of another object. And usually that's how enemies work. They're kind of assigned as children of, of collisions that they're standing on. Hmm. And then, you know, that they will be rendered as long as that collision is also being, quote, drawn. The collisions actually have nothing visual to show, but they kind of act as parents and you can just group all the enemies standing on them can be grouped under that draw group. So this is just for the purpose of like calling? You mean it like if you're not, if they're not in exactly. view? Yeah, okay. you only, because depending on where you're standing, the game is interested in rendering as little as possible. So right, it will right. literally, it will only render things that are in direct view wherever you are. And unless they've done something different in recent games, it's kind of very painstaking manual process to set all that up. And it's, it's very difficult to automate. And you can imagine in a, in, a, in a relatively flat, widespread map, it's kind of easy just to render everything within some radius. Mm -hmm. But for something more complex like Stormvale Castle, oh, yeah. I imagine the developers just kind of have to, you know, stand on a collision and just manually note down which what Dang. should be visible from from that point and they will add those draw groups in as needed very wow. painful but yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of manual control uh, the reason those draw group numbers are so big on this map piece you've selected is because they're kind of they're bit flags so you have a lot of different draw groups being uh interpreted here as an integer like a 32-bit integer mm -hmm. so it's kind of hard to make sense of them in map studio at the moment uh, in soul structs which supports dark souls one and bloodborne it's kind of shown as a bunch of checkboxes, and you can just check or uncheck each of those draw groups with with larger numbers. That would be something that'd be awesome for Catalash to add to Map Studio. I think an easier way to visualize all those draw groups. That's cool. Uh, Hot Pocket says that's why you can sometimes experience a bug where enemies disappear if you drag them far enough from where they start, because their parent collision gets unloaded, so they do as well. Yeah, I've definitely seen that a lot in in Dark Souls One. I think Andre, if you try to pull him towards uh, Sin's Fortress, I think he like he'll disappear until so you you get back in there although that also might be well i guess that's part of the rooming but yeah yeah exactly so definitely a system with its limitations but um it works for the most part and in elden ring personally i thought it was quite seamless i really didn't notice many visual bugs at all yeah. which is again super impressive considering the scale of the game and how complex some of the maps are definitely. that's off to you from soft yeah. <laughs> if you're watching and like waiting to <laughs> dmca takedown or something like i don't know um, yeah, please <laughs> please consider this praise first. Right. Okay, so what All else right. do we have here? We've got um, we've got conditions. So un we've got unknowns. some unknowns. Yeah. yeah. So I wouldn't wouldn't mess with them too much. G <laughs> that controls lighting. Uh, 
that's a newer system. I think Bloodborne was the first game to use GPRM, possibly Dark Souls 2. Dark Souls 2 is just such a black box to me, modding-wise. I'm not sure what started then. But um, yeah, it replaced draw param from the older from the older games, which oh, yeah, functioned yeah. as normal params. Just okay. a different data format, pretty much. But uh, again, this this character won't have its own lighting because it will, uh, you know, fog is not relevant for this character. Fog is something that only applies on a collision level, okay. depending on where you're standing. So yeah, a lot of unused fields here, zeros and minus ones. And the think param ID, that's the first super interesting one we've seen. That is pointing to the AI param for this that this character wants to use. And I, I believe it, I recall randomizing this param and, <laughs> and having some interesting consequences. Yeah, that definitely would, because you'd have enemies, yeah, trying to use animations that they might not have available. Um, so yeah, that's definitely, you know, the, the think param ID, not only does it reference which script uh, they get the enemy should use when it's determining what to do, but there's just a bunch of parameters there, like how how far it can see, how far away it's it enters battle state from, you know, kind of peaceful state and, yep, and yep. things like that. So anything related to AI and detection and things. And the NPC param, which is what we saw last week, you know, it's pointing to all these fields like health yeah. and defenses and special effects and things like that. So very critical field for defining the boss. And collision part name, that's what I was referencing before. So that's the parent collision okay. that determines when this character will be visible. Uh, one thing, I, I guess a small disagreement I've had with, with Catalash is the naming of that, because it doesn't even have to be a collision. It can be any other part. It just assigns it as a draw parent, which is what I prefer to call it. So in some rare cases, you will see a map piece used instead of a collision for that. Oops. Now, uh, let's see. If I, so if I see that ID, like, can I find that collision part in here right now? It's So you can find it if, if on the left in our map, view if you drop tick that little drop down arrow next to Stranded Graveyard you can see the full oh. list of everything in the map okay delightful and I think it's right there on the screen actually H 002400 uh 2400 yeah so then if I click that it, it selects it in game as well yeah but it's not actually visible oh, to us oh it's kind of hard to see I see okay I yeah. got you and it's interesting because the collisions, you know, you might be wondering, well, can I at least see where the center of the collision is? But the collisions, their center is kind of always at the origin of the entire world, uh, at least in older games. And so, you know, I imagine the way these are developed is that they're all kind of developed together. And then just at the end of development, they're broken up into different pieces. Hmm. Uh, but when they're doing the actual modeling, you know, it's, it's easier to do it when everything's connected because you might want to do, you know, sculpting tools on vertices and things like that. Interesting. Yeah, so we can't really see where the collision is, but we can guess it's going to basically cover the, the entire boss arena, would be my sure, educated sure. guess for where that is. So if you were moving the enemy, one thing that people forget to do, and I covered this in one of my tutorials for Dark Souls 1, is to change, make sure you change that name to the new parent collision that you want to use for this character. Because often people, you know, we could move the Soldier of Godric to the start of the Stranded Graveyard, right? and then we'll, we'll, we'll load into the game and he won't be there. He will be there, but he just won't be rendered. And if you render the boss arena, he would be rendered off in the distance. Right, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, but, and ironically, would probably fall to his death because he'd be standing <laughs> on nothing. Yeah, nice. and that happens. Now, now because if they're visible, that means they are entirely inactive as well? Or would he be invisible and actually, like, hitting you and stuff? It means fully inactive, okay. yeah. So vis okay. visible's a bit of a misnomer. It's not like right. you can't use it to cheat a little invisibility effect. It just means loaded. Right, really. right. Got yeah. you. But there are various different kind of sub load states. This is, it, it gets quite confusing, but you know, you can have an asset semi loaded and just ready to render, um, as opposed to being completely unloaded in the game, not using it at all. And you know, this character, as long as you're in the Stranded Graveyard, the soldier's model is going to be there, ready to be enabled at a split second. Because gotcha. otherwise, you'll get, you know, pop in, vi vi visible pop in effects. Gotcha. So, what else do we have here? Model name, that's another critical one. Uh, that's the, yeah, the, the uh, files oh, yeah. that will be looked up for the model. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So any map file like this, uh, it has a separate section, but it's basically just a list of the models that the game should load. And fortunately, Map Studio automates that for you. So if you were to change that model to like the model for, I don't know, uh, Malekith, for example, uh -huh. you, you wouldn't have to worry about going into the model list and making sure the map loads Malekith. Map Studio will detect that you want to use that model and it will just add it when you save the map file, it will add it to that list for you. Interesting. So that, that, that's nice, yeah. Interesting. So let's see. So with the with this studio, um, I mean, this map studio, if I save a project, 
Is there a separate process to actually like inject that back into the, the game files? Or is it, am I modifying it directly right here and just save? You are modifying it directly, I believe. And okay. that's the reason I can guess that is because the the Map Studio program wanted the Oodle DLL. And that tells me that it is actually, you yeah, know, just unpack it's, it's ready. It's, yeah. yeah, exactly. Well, obviously, yeah, it must have unpacked it. That's true. But yeah. it's ready to recompress it, I hope, when you click okay. save. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, okay. So yeah, the I just I've seen a few people mention scale in the chat. I'm sorry to tell you that adjusting the scale here, uh, unless Elden Ring again has done something drastically different, will not ma make him huge in the game. Sag, is, are there yeah. any params around that or because? No, just, I, oh, okay. So if they is, uh, if they have like small crab and big crab, it's actually they supplied it with a model that is of a different size. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Okay. And the reason for it isn't just a visual thing, because you can imagine it, it's easy to scale up the model visually, and yeah. the problem is the Havoc data. And this is something that Nightfall's kind of doing for the first time, because we're able to resize these enemies. Uh, we've shown that off a few times and make a lot of variance with them, because when you do that, you have to resize the Ragdoll, you have to resize the Collision, you have to resize all of the animations individually, because the, the, the scale of the animation is kind of baked into right. it. Um, but of course, there are, I think it was in... In Dark Souls 3, there is kind of an internal Havoc parameter you can edit using Cheat Engine to just scale everything up or everything down. Um, but yeah, we don't have that available in Dark Souls 1, unfortunately. But yeah. you could create, you, you could scale using Cheat Engine, you could actually scale easier than that just by kind of telling Havoc directly. But you couldn't do it just by editing the scale in this file here. Oh, so he's got a crossbow available to him. I never see him use it though, so it's probably not in his AI to use it. Now he does. Looks like an awesome weapon. This it's a horn crossbow <laughs> sword. <laughs> yeah. There, it, we did have a funny thing where I had, um, I had randomized the think param, and when I went mm. in to fight him, I was in the middle of fighting him, and he suddenly just busted out his horn and was just like. <laughs> this is very good. Very good. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, so the reason for that, you can probably guess, is that the model has all of those different weapons, uh, you know, as part of the model, and the game is just masking yeah, just parts limiting. of the model. Yeah, yeah okay. exactly. Yeah. Base. And you can see they're all they're all on his uh, hilt as well, like uh, attached to his belt there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Oops. when he gets a weapon out or puts it away, depending on the um, the NPC param ID and the AI, those, those model parts will be toggled on and off as needed. Nice. Okay. Yeah. I think they're doing more enemies this way now, particularly very kind of modular enemies like these soldiers. Uh -huh, uh -huh. But the Black Knights did it way back in Dark Souls 1. You nice. know, all the different Black Knight variants yep. were part of one model. Yep. So uh, yeah, if you're doing modding with that, you've got to be careful you manage all those masking flags correctly as well in the params. Okay, so the position, that's obviously a major one here. And I think in Elden Ring, because the game world's so huge, they realized that they couldn't just use the shared coordinate system for the entire world, where you'd have things off at like, you know, yeah. minus 5,000 or something ludicrous <laughs> yeah. like that. Um, so I think these coordinates are now relative to the to an origin of the map. And then, you know, that's it, you can convert that into world coordinates if needed in game. But, but they have per map local coordinate system now. Which is nice. I'm just gonna and, yeah, put you them can under drag the map so they don't <laughs> want to respawn. <laughs> now, yeah. There's, mm, in most cases, do they have the start position and then whenever they activate, they're teleported to a spot or may they, will they just activate from where they're at? 99% of cases, they'll just be where they're at. Yeah. Oh, so if I did this and I started it, he would probably just fall through the floor. I imagine, yeah, you would load into the map and then you could wait 10 seconds or so and you would uh, get a boss defeated banner <laughs> popping up on your screen. Yeah. Very nice. <laughs> Unless, you know, it depends how the events are set up. The boss banner might not appear unless the boss battle has already started. Well, it depends how the events are sequenced. Yeah. All right. Position rotation. Let's see. Wait. Are there, are there any handles for rotation? I don't yeah, I think if you press E, you can switch to... Oops. Um, oh, wait. You can switch gizmos. Is it E? Ah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yep. E and W. But wait, how there did I do that? instead of oh because i'm not holding right click that makes sense yeah yeah okay cool so then we can rotate them yeah. yeah 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 can uh just put them upside down you know that's <laughs> and there we go. i'm not sure that uh rotation around the x or y axis or x or z I it matters say, uh, works for these yeah i think they only <laughs> i think they only respect rotation around the vertical axis unfortunately well that's fine i'm gonna have them upside down yeah. anyways unless no he's in ragdoll will, mid no one will ever know yeah ragdoll true <laughs> Yeah, scale. So this this will <laughs> this will work in Map Studio, but then it doesn't. It just doesn't exactly. Take. Yeah. Yeah. 
Alright. Yeah, and I'd be very surprised if it worked. Yeah. yeah. I'm not sure anyone has tested it for Elden Ring yet. Well, there's I, just no reason I'll to test it. Why it. not? We're we're doing all sorts <laughs> yeah. of testing here, so let's uh let's make oh, let's make him a little tiny boy. Let's, let's do negative negative one on all of these. Oh, I can't oh, I'm typing into my chat. Oops. <laughs> oh, oh, I know what's happening. There we go. Fifty one. What did he mean by that? That's a very secret I can't tell you. I'd have to. Area Stop. 51. That's... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run to the restroom real quick. I'll be right back. And entertain no the worries. chat. Entertain the chat. Oh. Hello, chat. You want to ask me some questions? Not about 51. I refuse to answer questions about that. Yeah, this is what it's like to figure it out. Uh, we mess with things and see if it works. Because a lot of these, these data types have fields that just don't do anything, which is funny. How about weapon changes? Like, can we give him Malak at the sword? You'd have to do a proper 3D model edit for that, uh, Lady Luna Viper. So one of the ways we do that is we have a program that can convert from soft models, which are, it's a file format called FLVER or Flavor. I, I, I assume everyone says Flavor, I certainly do. You can convert that to a public model type like FBX. You can then import that into Blender or Maya or whatever 3D editing software you want, and then make your changes and then convert it back to a, to a Flavor file. And that's how most model fixes are done. Uh, Just Johnny says, Grim, are there floor collisions visible? No, we were talking about that earlier. Because the collisions are a proprietary Havoc format, and Havoc are now owned by Microsoft, the, the latest Havoc libraries are very you know, secure, and you have to pay to get any access to them. So we just literally cannot open those files and show the geometry in Map Studio. How many rectangular Belgian waffles can you fit in your mouth? Uh, untested, untested. As a modder, I refuse to give a concrete answer if I haven't tested it. Anything the right this is unknown. Yeah, there are a lot of fields. You'll see, you know, as games go on, basically they take these file formats that they've been using for years and they just add new things to them as needed to support new things they want to do. And you can imagine Elden Ring, there's a lot of new things they wanted to do in Elden Ring. And so you get a lot of extra fields, like all these unknowns we're seeing on the right that are, do things that we have no idea yet. And a lot of them are just, you know, often zero or one or minus one. If we replace it with Malekith's model to the animations and hitboxes change auto. So at that point, no. Um, you know, you could edit the sword of the soldier's model and you could change it to Malekith's sword and it would visually look like Malekith's sword. But you would have to make sure you've set up a bunch of stuff to be compatible with the soldier's sword. So you'll need, you, you'll need your animation hitbox, you know, your animations to manipulate the same model points. You'll need, you know, because animations work on a bone system. Uh, you'll need your uh, dummy polys for generating visual effects to line up with the IDs. It'd be, you know, pretty... You'd have to do a few different things to actually get the like Malekith sword as opposed to just being purely visual. How do bone attachment for weapons? Yeah, similar, similar answer. I'm not kind of the model guy. I don't do a lot of uh, 3D model edits in, in games and things like that, but... I have done a lot of work with the Havoc formats so that we can edit them for Nightfall. So I've, I've seen a bit of that. But the bone attachment, you know, animations, they act on the bones and then vertices in the model are anchored to bones, to one or more bones. And when you manipulate the bone, the model, the vertices will be deformed with it. What would I say was my biggest pog moment of discovering something? Oh, there's been a few over the years. I've been modding for about five years almost now. It's almost my five year anniversary. <laughs> I think discovering how um, things, I've, I've tweeted some of this stuff. There's some really cool stuff they do in these games, like the infinite hallway for the Gwendolyn fight in Dark Souls 1. Oh yeah. It's, it's done in a really nice way where they have this, this texture that's made to look like it's infinite in the cutscene, and then they just vanish it away in things. Huh, that's cool. Yeah. Okay, yeah, let's cool. see. Let's move on with our uh, Soldier of God uh, um, investigation here. Uh, let's see, where we were we were at? Model name, position, rotation, scale, um, entity ID? Entity ID. Very, very important number. Possibly, <laughs> I wouldn't say the most important, but uh, if you're doing event scripting, you can only refer to things in the map that have an entity ID, and that's the ID you use to refer to them in the event scripts. So for all intents and purposes, it's it's a unique identifier for this this thing in yeah. the map. Yeah. Yeah. So it can be anything. If there were ten 
Soldier of Godrics, each one would have their own ID, and that's how you would manage what, which one you're editing or whatever. Exactly, which one you're manipulating. So if we wanted to, you know, make this into a two soldier fight, like we were talking about earlier, we would duplicate the soldier, we'd change the entity ID, and then we'd mm -hmm. duplicate the necessary event scripts using that new entity ID, and and then go from there. That's where we'd start. How how much of a process is that? Is that something that you think is worth doing today or something that maybe we we take a look a deeper look into the event script before we do that uh we literally we can't do it yet because there are no public event script editing tools you I, know, see. Um, I see hot pocket remix and fifth mat have been doing a lot of work figuring out what all the new event instructions do these commands that you can use in event scripts because again just just like with other other things elden ring has added a lot of stuff and we um we're going to kind of get together and settle on the kind of a first public release of those tools because you know i'm, I'm doing my stuff in python we all kind of have, have our own tool sets for that uh, there's a program called dark script which i imagine would be the easiest way to get into event scripting because it, it just lets you open the files directly and then handles all the saving like this whereas my tools are kind of a little lower level and they need a little bit of python knowledge to get the most out of but okay. yeah we'll definitely put that on the roster for a future session because yeah Hot, That's hot, where all the awesome stuff starts. Hot Pockets keeping them secret until people pay uh, their ransom. Enough pictures of cats. Okay, got it. All right, so I'll get cat pictures. Okay. Um, and just a reminder to everybody that all these tools and stuff were just made by the community after uh, I don't know how much digging into the files and figuring out how the, the, it's structured and what, you know, pff, what parameters are important to track and all that stuff. So, I mean, this, this is crazy. And, and you've got... You've got your uh, what was it called again? Uh, Soulstruct. That's, exactly. That's your yeah. program. Yeah, yeah, that's my program. Nice. Uh, it works for Soulstruct. Works for both versions of Dark Souls One and Bloodborne right now. And you know, I added Bloodborne because I wanted to do the the boss rush mod for that. Oh yeah. And I've been working on Elden Ring support for it a lot over the past few weeks, um, so that yeah, we can once we're ready, to, once we've settled on the new in event instruction set, we're just ready to pop that out and then. Um, it supports map editing like this, but not with the visuals, which is why Map Studio is so great. You know, you can use yeah. it to edit these That's fields nice. on the right. Yeah. yeah. But back in the old days with Daughters of Ash, we were using um, Wolf 2K's original tools. Oh, which yeah. Which is a very, yeah, simple um, Dark Souls 1 editor that lets you just <laughs> basically get editing numbers, and that's all it can do. And it, but it was enough. It got, us, got me there in the end. Oh, man. But yeah, those are the good old days. Okay, we've got Entity ID. We've got is shadow source. This is more lighting stuff here, maybe, or well, I guess, yeah. Is point light shadow source? I don't think that. Yeah, more lighting options. Yeah. So, be fun to mess around with those. Like, Ooh. I assume is shadow source makes it seem like he would cast a shadow if you ticked it, but not sure. Is shadow destination? Is that dest? I think that means he can have shadows cast on him, like the game's yeah. dynamic shadow system. Yeah. That's pretty cool. His shadow only is pretty cool. You Whoa. Know, just, a, just a shadow. <laughs> Ooh, I like that. I think um, Great Graham Cracker, <laughs> I see you're in the chat. I remember you tweeted something. You had you made the Crystal Golems in Dark Souls 1 only visible in reflections in water, which was really awesome. Oh, that's creepy. Yeah. And that was using a draw only reflect cam right there. I oh, think. there it is. Oh, oh, I think yeah. there's some water in the arena. Is, uh, I could be wrong. Um, I think there is because there's... Wasn't there lightning? And I was talking about how he'd deal more damage. Maybe not. Maybe not. Shadows are a bit weird in Elden Ring with the trees not influencing shadows. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I think they made a few kind of compromises yeah. in Elden Ring just because of the scope of everything. Yeah. Makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Um, okay, I'll try leaving him as shadow only and probably remove <laughs> shadow dust and we'll see what happens. <laughs> this is the kind of modding I can get behind. Let's yeah. see what happens. Yeah. Uh, and then we've got entity group IDs. So yeah, that's I imagine that's used kind of to similar for the first groups. I'm not sure. Yeah, that, okay. that's something that's not not familiar to me. Okay. But I think yeah, it's bit flags that can be used to associate certain entities together. But couldn't tell you for I sure. Just, I just noticed it's the same amount of entries as the other groups, so maybe yeah, related. I, uh, I suspect it's another flag system. And then, and name. then finally we have the name. Yeah. yeah. So name. Uh, by default, all of the parts are just names, they're model, underscore, and then like an instance ID. So 9003. Uh, one of the first things we do when we're modding is actually change those to useful names. I'm pretty sure they have useful names for these in their files, but when they export them, you know, on, on day, on the final day, they just strip all those names out and just auto name them. So gotcha. yeah, one of the first things we do is rename them once we identify something. 
So you can do that right now as well if you want, just so. So you this can is easily just a, pick them out of a list. It's just a string here. It's not like anything exactly. that's going to be read in. Exactly. Just a string. No special powers. Soldier of God. Sorry if my head's been blocking any stuff, but it's mostly to the bottom. So, all right. <laughs> okay. So let's say we want to make changes here. We just file save. Save all. Yep. Um, uh, just save. So, I think save all will save all the maps, and that okay. might take a billion years or so. Yeah, and I may have messed up something in uh, <laughs> in Stormvale that I didn't Stormvale. realize. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Okay. It seems like it's done, so let's see. Uh, what... uh, George points out the name does matter for cutscenes. That's interesting. Oh. Yeah. Where that? Okay. Well, luckily they didn't give Soldier of God a, a cutscene, so I think we're okay. We're <laughs> okay for now. Oh, even in DS1, George. I had not realized that. I thought they referred to them like by index or something. Interesting. That would explain a lot. You know, when you do enemy randomizer in Dark Souls One or other games, you get these stretched cutscene yes. models because it's yeah, yes. <laughs> using the wrong model because it's just looking it up by name, but the model's been changed. I love those. I love those. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. <clears throat> Particularly when Gaping Dragon has something else placed on it, because then it's just like that little, the yeah, head is like. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see. This should be shadow only. Upside down. No, he shouldn't be upside down. Okay, he's not shadow only. I wonder... Uh... Oh, there is water all throughout here. Does he oh, have... he's reflected. Yeah, yeah it's a very weak reflected? reflection. Um, yeah, it's kind of hard to see him. Because of the light. Uh... They made the water effects too good. Yeah, it's a little shallow here. Yeah. But if it was just the reflection, it'd probably be easier to see because you pick it out. Oh, there you go. Yeah, I can see him well here. Yeah, yeah. That, that's Interesting. Cool. Yeah. Okay, let's let's try and undo some of those changes I made. <clears throat> uh, okay, is shadow only? We'll tr we'll put on shadow dust and then we'll try draw only reflect cam. My worth. My pocket points out it might be worth moving him a little bit just so we can be sure that the changes are being registered as well. It's probably a good idea. Moving him close to the fog, as in, you don't need to quit the game for map changes. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, but you just do, um, you just gotta save and quit. Save and quit. Yeah. yeah okay. Uh, wait. Move him near the entrance fog. Is that what you're saying? Oh, just you can put him just in the middle of the arena or something. Oh, so he doesn't have to run up every time. Exactly. Yeah. And then we'll know that we're ah, getting modded. So I got, I got you, I got you. Yeah. All right. Let's see. Oops. Okay. So, Save. There we go. And One thing that um, event scripts do as well, which I didn't mention before, is uh, handling AI, which is why in in games, uh, particularly in older games, you had any, you got bosses. If you could find a way to damage them before entering the fog, they would just stand there and take it. Uh huh. Like um the. Uh, what are they called? Those those jewel the gargoyle prototypes in Demon Souls, man eaters. Oh yeah, man eaters. Yeah. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. That that famous exploit and things like yeah, that. Yeah, you can do that with Capra Demon and <clears throat> uh, Sif too. Yeah, and I think they they'd rather that happen because if you if you have a boss activated AI oh. when you're not in the arena, they will just struggle to get out. It looks like our changes okay. aren't being picked up. Right. Okay. That's interesting. Well, that's good because he wasn't a shadow. Well, I mean, good in certain senses. <laughs> Yeah. Um, there's hope. There's hope for shadow mode. Shadow right. mode. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, hmm. So uh, let's just pop into the map studio folder and see what the, the, the update right. time for the um, for the file is, like the, when it was last updated. So which file are we looking at? Uh, it'll be in the game oh. folder. Oh, you mean in the game folder? Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, just just to check if we've got an updated. So it's M18. M18 yeah, map map m18 yeah Doo -doo -doo. so you, do, you want to go into you don't want to go into this oh. subfolder this this just contains all the assets you want to go back to the map folder and go into map studio oh i see yeah that's where these uh you know files that specify everything are, are found it shows today but 11 you know not not our Same current times yeah yeah okay so uh anyone got any ideas in chat what save make your project directory your mod folder in mod engine the uh, map studio project folder okay project so when we directory. save it uh when we save it it's not saving it directly to the game i think uh, so let's see here uh, i think on your desktop you put you put the a whole folder itself folder. and then we'll slap this into mod Oops. uh desktop please wait, 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 wait. i'm blind there we go <clears throat> um 
Map Studio test. Oh gosh, there's I see what's happening. There's music stacking on top of itself. I had some other music and I was like, what's going on? <clears throat> uh, oh wait, you're right, test. Wait, Mod Studio test. Mm, now I'm... Oh, I see. Yeah, so when you save, it's not actually saving them into the game. So typically, you would set your project directory gotcha. in the mod engine folder, right? And then you could easily turn on and off. But because we're being I direct see, hackers, I see, I see. UX oh, okay. So, um... Gotcha. Okay, so yeah, so for since we're UX, I mean, you can still do mod engine with UXM, or you would have to unpatch the EXE. Is that right? No, I think you can still do it. Mod engine will just overwrite whatever's there. You know, okay. It doesn't care whether UXM is. Yeah, let's just, to get let's there do first. a mod engine here. Yeah. I need to clean up my good. my desktop, so I need to do this a lot. <laughs> Uh, okay, I'm blown away the survival stuff for now because yep. who knows what the heck is going on with that. Oh, this will be an interesting test uh, to see if it actually <laughs> works. Uh, considering the mod... Well, I guess it was only the regulation bin stuff that wasn't working for for the survival mod. Yeah, because we were seeing text, I remember. We are seeing text, which is like the... Yeah. But isn't that the MSG files or is that also regulation bin? That's in the MSG files, yeah. So yeah. that's what makes me think it was just the regulation bin. Gotcha. Not bin. Yeah. yeah. Maybe someone came in and they did one of those tricks. They replaced like huh? a letter in the file name with an identical foreign letter or something like that. I saw him. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that looks good. Yep. Okay. So now let's back but out. Uh, he's not being drawn by reflect only. So maybe yeah. Did that I work. did I do that or uh, I guess so? Uh, yeah. Draw only reflect cam. Yeah. Maybe not. How about is shadow only? Yeah. Let's try that. So save. I think when we save, um, it's still only going to save to that other project, I think. Oh, I see what you're saying. I think we have to tell we have to tell Map Studio where where mm. we actually want it to save, or we can just copy it in for now. But that yeah, could get tedious. I guess yeah. Well, can we update where our project location is? I guess we yeah. Just... There should be if we just move the actual project. Oh, we already did because we copied that project file. So if we go open project into the mod engine folder. We oh should... yeah. Uh, wait, did we? We should be saving there. Uh, oh, this project JSON? I see. Yeah, I think that's all we need. Okay. Great oh. Graham Cracker says it needs draw, reflect, cam, and draw only. So we might have to tick an extra field to see. Um... Okay, draw by reflect, cam, and draw only reflect cam. Yeah. All right. Uh, mod engine, mod. Here we go. Boom. Okay, it's opening, I think. We've got stacking music again. <laughs> Okay, so now we've opened it up. M18, Stranded Graveyard. Load it. There's our boy. He is moved. And then... Boom. Draw by Reflect Cam. Save. Yeah, I copied the Project JSON. So yeah, we opened that, yeah. Wait, which means it probably has the wrong folder. Do I have to edit that JSON or uh, let me see here? Uh, project name test, blah, 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 blah. Well, it should be saving the local files, right? It should be fine for now. Yeah, okay, okay. Let's see what happens. Uh, well, he's still showing up here. But we can make we can do another adjustment just to make sure. Oopsies. No, he's killing me. Uh, let's do let's undo this stuff and uh, just move him again. See that it's getting our changes. I'll move him back again. Whoop. The what inappropriate activity? Oh, you mean from yeah? Okay. <laughs> Save. Duplicate. Maybe it doesn't just work in Elden Ring. Maybe. But maybe I'm also just doing all of this wrong. So we'll see. Oh, wait. Did I... Yeah. Okay. Yep. That, that got the update. He got pushed back. Okay. So, yeah. Maybe it's uh, just those settings aren't applying but obviously we're making changes and this is all stuff that's working so i mean i don't want to spend too much time trying this stuff but let's try his shadow only real quick 
in a pro pro. Can I? Oh, you know what? <laughs> I just realized I turned down all the audio, so I couldn't hear Mr. Grimrock. Sorry about that. <laughs> I, I had suspicions. Because I was like, you know, I didn't want all this audio to keep overlapping. So now I'm just going to mute Elden Ring here. There we go. So now Grim is back. Yeah, I'm no, glad no one heard me give away my darkest secret. Just <gasps> oh my gosh. Myself. Uh, oh well. Um, maybe next time. Okay, so yeah, I don't know if uh, what's up with these parameters or they, they seem to not be working yeah. either on the fly or at all, but uh, the position is absolutely working. Um, is there anything else you think we could change that would that would be kind of very uh, noticeable well, in here? We, we, could, we can change the model just as a test to have some fun. Yeah, absolutely. Let's do that. Say you yeah. want to model swap Soldier of Godric. Yeah, who, who are we feeling, chat? <laughs> Make it two of him. I think that would require more event scripting stuff, right? That, that, that's what you were asking about, Lady Luna, yeah? Yeah, we could make two of him, but there would be nothing controlling the behavior of the second one. Like, he would be trying to attack us through the fog gate. Uh, he's deaf. The game wouldn't care when he died. But you could certainly do it. It'd be worth the test, and we could see exactly what he meant. That sounds like an, an interesting mod in and of itself. Mod everything that not, <laughs> to, you know, have that behavior, whatever it is. Although they'd probably all just be falling to their death. Um, okay, uh, let's say... Uh, Actual Godric? <laughs> uh, a boss might be... Well, I mean, it's a, it is a boss. Let's say Patches, because he's a human size, and that seems... Uh, quick and easy enough to do, hopefully. I don't know. Patches so, uh, should work. We'll have to... We might run into a few issues there. Um, is it because he's because, a player model yeah, he's a player zero. So okay. we would have to assign the character a nit param to make mm. sure he's got patches armor and weapons mm -hmm. and i'm not sure hey uh, fifth matt you probably know how ai scripts work in this game now would we have to do any ai script repackaging in order to change to a model that's not normally in this map because that's definitely something you used to have to do what well, is would, the game would there finally... would there be an easy easier choice would it be easier to do something like millennia uh would unless the ai script is an issue we'd, we'd run into the same problem there oh i see i see it might tell us yeah we can certainly uh, do a a quick duplication for now though well, i'm sure matt's probably letting us know <laughs> oh i heard a whop sound can you make, make him a giant crab but change his model to be squatting patches <laughs> <laughs> throwing squatting patches at you make him throw <laughs> <laughs> ai sounds and sfx come with the model in ar true innovation that is music to my ears matt that's so good that's great so yeah, it makes it very easy to to, to change model, and all of the the files that that new model needs will come with it. Because that was a, that's always been a nightmare. You have to do so many things simultaneously just to get new models. Yeah. yeah. Dang. Okay. So that's cool. So we can change to um. Oops. Where'd he go? Oh, there he is. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So how do we start this? Do, do we are we swapping models simply by uh, picking an ID, or are we like pointing it at a at a model file or? Nope, it's just changing that model ID. So just ID four digit file. Okay. Do we have a database of of uh, NPC IDs, or are we just open up Yap? Uh, yeah. What was it? Yapper? Y <laughs> uh, Yap. It's called the Rune Bear Edition. Uh, uh, yet, someone might yet. have a link. There might be a page on the wiki, or there's a spreadsheet somewhere. Let me quickly look that up. I'm sure there's a spreadsheet on the um on the modding server mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. Yep, has the list. Yeah. Mod that adds twice as many regular animals and makes them all follow you without attacking. Oh, that was, yeah, that was a thing during the, with the think param. Oh, no, George got timed out. Oh, my gosh. Thank you for that, George. Uh, sorry. <laughs> You're fine. That's. I, just, I, I sent you the link on a Discord level oh. to a spreadsheet. Might make it a bit easier. I'm oh, sorry, George. She... <laughs> I will have my revenge. Look, if you've been in the channel like 20 hours, then it it stops doing that. That's just like an auto bot timeout thing, and I have no way of permitting links, but uh, there it is. Uh, okay, let's see. So we were saying patches. Let's see. Patches? Uh, mm. So if we want to do patches, it'll just be C0, and yet yeah, we'll need to look up the character in it. Oh, I got you. I got yeah. you. Okay. Let's do something a little more straightforward for, with, with just this model swapping. So let's say... Um, the three fingers animated as the soldier. What about Melina? Okay. Let's, we could do Melina. 
Yeah, let's do that. All right. Okay, so C2180. Oops. Here we go. And let's see. What's the... What is the entry for that? C... Oh, here we go. Model name, yeah. C2180. Yeah, okay. Oh, yep. Yeah. It's... It. There you so go. Matt notes that to do a full proper swap, we'd also want to change the NPC param ID, the AI param, and the character init param. Yeah. But this is going to give us Melina, a, a Melina who thinks that she's soldier of God. <laughs> okay, I'm really interested yeah. in that actually. So let's see. Yeah. Let's see what we it get. Typically, it tends to work okay because you know consist the animations have IDs that are quite consistent. Like a right hand basic right, attack right. will always have, will always be like animation three thousand, for example. So almost so, certainly T pose once or twice. Here she yes. comes. That will just make her even scarier. She's got no weapons. She's missing half her torso. Ah, <laughs> oh, she's just stopped. She gave up. Oh, wait. Nope. She started again. She's slapping. <laughs> the open hand slap is really good. Okay, nice. Ah. Oh, that's great. So, uh, yeah, the, the hitboxes are not lining up for her. The, oh, the she did hit trying to... Oh, yeah. Okay, so some of them are working. Yeah, the, that's, her that's hitbox was, like, expect. over to the right. I walked over... Uh, anyways. Okay. So that's oops, I quit all the way up. Cuz the new the new quit out button they have. Okay, so then this is combining our knowledge that we we learned last time of changing params. Mm -hmm. Um so and we would want to uh No, we just modify these directly, huh? And that's then That's right. Yeah. We don't actually need to edit the regulation file, but we will need to look up which numbers to use in it. Okay, let me see here. I got I've got a lot right. of windows and I'm figuring out the best way to do this. All right, let's I just... got it open here as well, so I can help you out. Yep. Oops. Yapped. And yapped Rune Bear. Although, do we have... Let me see. Do we have a regulation bin in... Yeah. Uh, wait. In the mod... Yeah, okay. So we can just open up this one in our mod engine and then edit that. And then that should just slap it over, yeah? Let's see. Uh, yeah, I think that's right. Okay. Um, desktop... Mod engine. Okay, it's opening. Having a lot of windows open is a common modding problem. Yeah, I, I can see yeah. how this could quickly get out of hand. Like notepads of like, all right, here's the IDs I need for this and that. Yeah, multiple mm -hmm. monitors, yeah. That was my main motivation for having soul structs, like an all-in-one sort of thing. Um, and you can just, you know, follow hyperlinks to get around rather than looking up window 15 on your desktop yeah that's super great okay so let's see character init param uh that's what we need no, if we're gonna that's do patches. For patches yeah 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 uh -huh. for, just for melina we just need a npc param npc and we can find it quite easily using her model id but there'll probably be a few variants there that we want to hmm inspect let's see. Mm -hmm. tier 21 okay so there's yeah several melanas here and um, you said the ID. Where's the... The ID oh, is this just the row number. The row on number, the yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so are we, we comparing that the to... the base one. Yeah. Uh, okay. And then what are we modifying here? Because we want... We don't need to modify anything in the params. Oh, we don't? Oh, we're just no, getting we just... that here and then for putting that exactly. in the map studio? Yeah, exactly. Okay, so let's see. So 2180 and then four zeros. Yeah, Potentially you can click on it again as well to edit it and then control C. Oh, okay, I see. Yeah. All right. And that would go, oh, NPC param ID. Yep, exactly. Boom. And then the think param ID will probably be the same, but worth worth checking a look at anyway, just in case. Just Let's see. Oh. Often they have uh, friendly ones and unfriendly ones. Let me... These might not be named, possibly, the the think params. No, oh, some of them are. Let me see. I loaded the... Th yeah, there we go. It's the same number. Okay. okay, great. Awesome. So she only has one, which makes sense, because, you know, anytime she's fighting, she's on your side. But, yeah, well, she might not attack you, because her team type in those think params will probably be set to ally. Oh, so we, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we might need to um, edit that as well, and we can make a duplicate. Otherwise, uh, if, if you forget that you've made this mod and then summon her against a boss, you might be in for a nasty surprise. <laughs> nice. Summon difficulty. I like that. Uh, <laughs> increase. All right, so let's see. Uh, where am I? Okay, here we go. So I'm going to launch mod. 
And uh, if she's friendly, she's friendly. You know, that's okay. We're gonna see. Yeah, we'll see her as a friend. Did you actually change that in the Think Param ID then? Yeah, I did. I did. You did. Because okay. it was exactly the same, so I just pasted okay. it in over. Oh, okay. Easy, easy. Yep. Let's see how that works out. Did we save? Maybe. <laughs> This would actually be a very difficult boss because, uh, well, I, I think you might be able to hurt her. It depends on her team type. Probably no, not. No, she's, she's friend. Oh? She's friend. Oh, no, yeah, I can friend. hurt her. Yeah, she's friend. Okay. She looks all good now. She's just, she's just, she will not face us. <laughs> and she just walks away from us. This is she's rude. She's disgusted with you. Come on. We are truly maidenless. Ugh. Wow. <laughs> maidenless mod and just make all of the NPCs maidens that walk away from you. All right. This is such a... I wonder what's making her do this. It's such an interesting script. Oh, just... Yeah. Oh, wait. She stops if she gets to a certain distance. So... Right. So it's like the default for <laughs> allies who can't detect any enemies is just to position themselves some distance away from you. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh. Like that. oh, yeah. She puts herself at, at a certain distance. So she'll get closer if we get away. But she ran all the way up to you there. And then yeah. And then away. she walks away. <laughs> okay. All right. So let's change that team type, which is in the param, you said. Yeah, and um, we can make it a duplicate as well. So, like I said, we don't uh, accidentally mess with anything because that's that's good practice as and, well. And the params, do we need to we need to reload every time the game? Yes, we okay. do. Unfortunately, okay, that's okay. Just want to make sure. Uh, okay. Uh, sorry, was this in the think param? Yeah. So this one right here. So I would. I remember we had issues with the filter last time when we were creating new rows. I might. Oh you might right. Want to re yeah, reset yeah. the filter just in case. Yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. Okay. Yeah. And make sure I should still have it selected, right? Yeah, there, there shouldn't be too many entries in okay. this list. It should uh, still be near the top. Uh oh yeah, what what was the number? Two, two, two one, one eight, eight zero. zero. Yeah, okay. Okay. Cool. And then we can press Control Shift N is the shortcut I think for duplicating. If you want to duplicate it, or we can edit. Oh yeah, um hmm. Yeah okay yeah let's dupe it and then we're gonna just yeah we just add one to the ID. Yeah, that'll do it. Boom. Repeat count zero. Step value zero. Name optional. Melana. Soldier of Melana. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Melana of Soldier of God. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Now we've okay. got... And now yeah, we'll, we'll edit this one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What other interesting things here? Enable weapon switch. Now, she didn't have a weapon, but she also wasn't... It she wasn't, wasn't in combat. Yeah. yeah. I don't imagine you'd have to enable that. Okay. Again, this is um, you know, this is how Melina functions just when she's on your team. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Don't avoid giant enemy. That's a funny one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know. <laughs> so let's so see. So she will she will avoid giant enemies. Yeah. Confirmed for coward. By default. <laughs> yeah. It's probably only Alexander who um has that enabled, I imagine. <laughs> So we've got battle start distance, so that's just our aggro radius, yeah? Yeah, and that won't matter um, too for much. For a boss I fight, think. yeah. Yeah, what, for this. Just out of curiosity, what, what sort of unit do they use for that? Uh, these it... are, quote, meters. Uh, meters? And I, yeah, I think they're basically in-game meters, if okay. you imagine a meter, uh, okay. from memory. I think the player is, like, 1.5 units tall or something like Makes that. Sense. Oh, Makes sense. It's a bit, bit taller. Yeah. <laughs> are we giant? Yeah, we can make ourselves giant and then have her avoid us. Um, yeah, to scale up. Okay, team attack effectivity? So that's like friendly fire. It tells you, because um, you, do you remember, um, like in, I remember seeing it in Castle Morn, you have factions fighting each other. Uh -huh, like, uh -huh, uh -huh. But they don't deal much damage to each other. Oh, and that's, I, yeah. I think, that field, I think that field controls that. Or if not that one, it's a similar field, because they don't want to make the enemies kill each Just other. Just kill them immediately, like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. They, yeah. Very cool. All right. So you can, yeah, you can scale it. Search vision, battle vision, update battle vision. Act type on failed path. Time to forget yeah. target. <laughs> she will never yeah. forget you, basically. <laughs> um, use fall jump. Did I pass it? I must have passed it. What is it? Do you know Melina what it's 10,000 seconds and Melina will forgive you. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, it should be. I might be. Is it an NPC param? Am I, I thought it was an AI param. Let's check an NPC param here. Yeah, just take a look at an NPC param Our for a team type. It should, it should be a drop-down box. Yeah, okay. Oh, yeah, team type here. In, okay, In right. the NPC param. Okay. Okay, so this is what we wanted to duplicate. Okay, 
So let's duplicate Seven. this. Control yeah. Shift N. All right. Same ID, plus one. Uh, soldier of, oh my gosh. Soldier of Melina. They do two spaces? How did I do that? Um, all right. Soldier of Melina. Team type. And then we've got a lot of team types. White ghost, black ghost, gray ghost, wandering ghost. Live. Type 51. Has to be type 51. 51? <laughs> no, just kidding. Oh. <laughs> you, you, yeah, you, you wanted 51 before. I don't remember what it was now. Oh, I don't remember either. Uh, okay, so let's see. Hostile NPC, or is there something more specific than that? You could just go boss, uh, which is basically what we're making here. Oh, yeah, yeah. boss way up there. Oh, this, or an enemy too, yeah. Boss. Yeah, this affects two things. It affects uh, you know, what teams they'll target, but also what teams they can deal damage to. Mm -hmm. so bosses will not target other enemies, but they can damage them accidentally, which a lot of bosses do. What if I make move type lumbering? I love the experimentation. <laughs> so this, don't even ask me. Just do Floating? it. Don't even ask me. Okay. Uh, I, 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 okay. I want to see lumbering first. Okay. So let's. Uh, yeah. So we need to save this, but then we also need to update the param IDs in the map studio, right? That's right. Okay. So. And that's just. Uh, wait. We didn't actually change think, I think. But NPC no. param, we did. Yeah, so that, and that's, we should be Gucci then. We should be. Okay, let's save. This is going to be Lumbering Melina. <laughs> lumbering Boss Melina. It, uh, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, it's a, it's a real shame you have to restart the game to mess with these. Um, I know Metal Crow designed an injection system that works oh. for Dark Souls 1 at least. That kind of makes the game reload it dynamically. But it did cause it to crash about 1 in 50 times. Ah, that's not so bad. Yeah. That's 49 times that you don't have to reload the game, so... Exactly. Might be something related to AI that Melanus won't support as far as the lumbering goes. Well, let's see. There's always a chance that this stuff doesn't work out of the box, but, uh... Oh. Okay, okay, there we go. Oh, cool. She is... It seems like she's trying to do projectiles. But they couldn't reach me. But she's definitely a, you know, enemy team now. Oh, she's not hurting me, though. Could that be related to the lumbering? Maybe. I'd be surprised. Because it just said movement type. Hmm. Yeah, she's got, like, the step backs, like the, the Black Knife Assassins, which is cool. Um. Interesting. Yeah. Although, uh. Now, I know you can summon her. I don't, I don't know, actually, how she fights when you summon her, but... I seem to also remember that, like, like maybe at some point she was fightable against the player. So these are maybe unfinished, like combat AI. I'm not sure though. No, it should it should all work the same way. I mean, switching team type is typically all you have to do. Okay. okay. Otherwise, it's just hitboxes. Okay. Interesting. Very interesting. Okay, so maybe we're editing the wrong Melina here. Oh, of course. Uh, I got, I forgot, because in the AI, there was only one to duplicate, so we knew it was going to be right. But with the NPC param, yeah, we're probably duplicating the one that just sits next to you at the Sites of Grace. <laughs> well, yeah, that's kind of more yeah. exciting, too, but uh, not so <laughs> not functional, <better>. I guess. <laughs> I mean, she's having fun. Whatever. Uh, she is. All right. Yapped. Then let's go back to that. And we've got, let's see, there's Melina Tier 11. Do you know what the tiers are? Difficulty? Um, probably, yes. And that one I see is a white ghost team type. So that's almost certainly the one that we want here because okay. it's the one that you, you'll summon. Okay, so then let's go back and I'm going to delete... Well, I guess I don't... Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. you, you can probably delete it because it's not... Um... How do I... How do I delete an entry? Oh, I think delete it's shift, row. shift delete. Yeah. Control delete? Control oh, delete. Delete row? Yeah. Okay. Delete. All right. Then we'll duplicate... And if we get the, give it all the same IDs, we don't have to change anything in Map Studio, yeah? Exactly. Nice. Yep. So, what do I have copied here? Still the same thing. Good. Soldier of Melina. Uh oh. Ah, uh, what did I do? Did I have the the search up uh, or something? I don't know. <laughs> That's not there. I did it. When that does happen, sometimes you can try to continue, and it might. Oh. Might oh. Yeah. I did an oopsie. 
All right, let's reopen that regulation it's bin. Safe this way. There it is. I think it, when you when you open it, it should open the latest one that you had by default. Oh. I oh, think. okay, I got you. Yeah. Well, that's nice. Um, NPC param. Maybe not. There's millennia. Don't want to get confused. 2180. No. We've got Soldier of Melina here. I don't think we actually duplicated it, though. So, yeah, we didn't save no. it. Yeah. I think that's the one we want to delete. Control delete. Tier 11. Control shift N. Mm -hmm. Update the ID. Soldier of Melina. I wonder if it's... Okay, no. There we go. We're good. Now, uh, team type... Oh, this is uh oh, I was scrolling up and it it got sad again. Set to an instance. Uh oh. Is it because I'm using the same ID and it's like I don't know. I don't think so. No, I've never seen this before. Interesting. Let me can let me delete this. Look at t okay. The whole side is buggered now, so I'm gonna yeah. To might relaunch. Have to, might have to start again. Maybe uh, scroll up to the top before you duplicate. Before that seems that. to be. Okay. Yeah, it seemed to be triggering when you tried to <clears throat> scroll up. All right, there's Melina. Okay, it scrolled up. Oops. I want to delete the old one as well. Oh, yeah, it comes back. Soldier of Melina, goodbye. I'm going to change... Well, okay, I'm not going to change the ID now, just to test and see if... Yeah, sure, makes sense. One. Same name. Okay. All right, scrolled up. Oh, I see as I scrolled down, it, it okay, details. Uh, yeah, what do the details say? Object reference is not set to an instance of an object. Hmm. That's unusual. Well then. Hmm. Well, for now, uh, why don't we just use the tier 11 param? Yeah, yeah, uh, we can do that. Rather than duplicating it. Yeah. We can do that. Um, yeah, quit. Yeah, I have no concept mm. of what this could, what this could be. Click reset no on that side when it happens. Oh, I didn't think about that. Well, that's just a filter, I think, but I don't yeah, I don't know, maybe. Yeah, it depends how serious a reset it is. Well, let me try, what I wanna try is, uh, let me dupe it, but give it a different ID and from the one we were deleting. I don't know, just to see. Uh, Soldier of Melina. Yeah, that it could be related to that, like some See now some working. information from yeah right something from the deleted one was stuck in memory. That's probably. what I was thinking. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So let's delete our old one so we don't get confused. Uh, now, <clears throat> team type is white ghost, but now we want boss. Okay. And uh, was there anything else we changed? I think. Oh wait. We did lumbering. I forgot about that. Uh, which means instead of lumbering... Wait, where was the move type? Was it right, it was right next to it? Uh, that was in type. thought. Is that here? Yeah, it's, it's here. Right. It's, it's here. just under. Yep. Um, now, move type, I was thinking about, like, uh, movement. But it does that probably mean more, like, what abilities it has at its disposal? Can you just, can you just hover over the move type oh, yeah, field right. name? Might tell us a bit more about it. Moving method. This changes the control. I, I uh, guess it is. Right. Maybe yeah. this is for debugging when you can um you can take control of other characters to test out their animations. Maybe. So it definitely right, is, maybe, yeah. is their movement because there's a mobile character. Uh, so I'm gonna do uh oh floating. Let's try floating. See how that goes. <laughs> oh, okay, good. And launch it up. It's usually good to keep changes incremental and only change one thing at a time, but maybe not as fun. Otherwise, you'll go crazy. <laughs> oh, wait, 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 wait. I didn't set it up in Map Studio. I didn't change the ID. So, this is now 0, zero, zero, zero 2. Save. Here we go. Remember, you don't have to quit the game just to make a change. Oh, right, from Map Studio, yeah. Yeah. Mm hmm, mm hmm. Distancing logic in terms of coming in close. Yeah, we'll see. I don't know. We'll Could see if be. it has any effect on it, on her. If she's just randomly floating, that'd be great too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's 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 uh, tempting to think it might just overhaul over, overhaul her animations entirely. Right. It's yeah. Probably something much more. Yeah. Passive. Okay. So. 
She's, uh... Hmm. She... <laughs> okay. Oh, she still doesn't have these hitboxes. Um... Hmm. She's definitely angry, though, and she looks different. So, like, she's got the hood that's kind of glitched on her. Yeah, um, right. Definitely using the bright one. I'm just taking a peek at other fields that could be relevant to who she's able to damage. I'm going to undo... One test we could do... We could create uh, an allied milliner as well, and see if she can hurt the soldier of Godric. Yeah, true. Uh, I'm going to change her move type from floating back to humanoid yeah. and see if that maybe... Probably, yeah, we'll take the the wise the wise path <laughs> and make sure it's... Hard to tell. No weapon just shows the visual effects. Yeah, that was the same for her. Still not holding a knife. Um, we can enable can change weapons for her, maybe, and maybe she can. But she's already she's got it out technically. Mm. Oxy says the model mask for her knife needs to be turned on. Oh, why would it uh, be turned off here, but be turned on when you have her as a summon? Though, what what could be changing that? Oh, she's very dashy. Whoa! I just punched her for. Most of her health. Wait, that doesn't seem right. No. Because her summon version, unless her summon version has that little health, but I don't think so, right? <laughs> Maybe tier 11 was misleading. We Let me may... take a look at this. Yeah, stats possibly. Here. There's hood slash cloak, and then there is... Uh, wait, there's... There's already an enemy one. Maybe that's an unused one that... That's interesting. Yeah, by default, it's... Did you edit the map for your new NPC param? I believe I did. NPC... Oh, you mean edit the map as in, like, move her or something? We changed the NPC param ID. Param ID is good. Um, yeah, because often you get that low health when it can't find the NPC param. That would explain the other behavior as well. Oh. Because the health, clearly, you know, all of the params have it set to 19, 20, it looks like. Yeah, they're Soldier of Melina. Wait a minute. Oh, no. No, we're okay. Um, Could this be the same thing? Like, is is Mod Engine not putting regulation.bin into your game folder? Have, have we seen any regulation changes yet? <laughs> Dude, is this I, the survival yeah, I, Maybe. I don't know. We should make some some extreme change, right? Like, what can, yeah. what can, we, what can we do to her real quick or something that we can check? Uh, well, you can leave it as Soldier of Godric's param and just double his health or something like that um, um because it's hard to know right if she's but not working we, properly we did see a visual change at one point though oh but that was when we didn't change the npc param at all ah i'm not sure now because we, we, <laughs> we are seeing visual changes right because when you she oh wait was i was wearing did, the hood uh oh i might have done a read only earlier for testing oh, let me see on the mm. games oh god i don't even have it open on the base game regulation bin. I may have undone, not undone that. Uh, let's see here. Mm -mm -mm. Yes, it is read only right now. So let's see if that, that fixes mm. it. And that, that wasn't the... That shouldn't have been the issue the whole time because I set that today when troubleshooting for the survival mod. So, But let's see if that fixes it. Yeah. I, I thought Mod Engine just... You know, that's true. She, she touch is, that file. She is an enemy now, and we changed the team type. So that, uh, that that's right. Yeah, I okay. So that's definitely picking so up. It's definitely something. Yeah. Um. Twenty one, two one eight zero one zero three four is used for her Morgoth summon. Fifth mat checked. Let's see. Right. Yeah. Uh, that's the one we're using. Yeah. So the oh, the read only status of the. The regulation bin, I don't think, was affecting anything. And she's got the no. low health again still, so. Interesting. <clears throat> Very unusual. Hmm. Well, we could... Soldier of Melina. <laughs> yeah. Uh, draw type. Oh, oh no, okay. <laughs> There's an it NPC type. type. Standard and boss. I don't know what that does, but... Let's see. NPC type, okay if Zako enemies. Boss enemies are distinguished. Gotta watch out for those Zako enemies. Yeah, I don't know. Can we make her HP like 10k? Let's see. Um, 
That's NPC param, right? Is that the top? Base HP. Oh, well, the base HP is 1920, so she definitely doesn't yeah, have that right now. Uh, Unless... Maybe they changed the way that boss health bars are drawn. Maybe she does have that much health, but the boss health bar is different. It would depend on the instruction. I don't think that's the case. Mm. Yeah. But Zac it doesn't explain her inability to, to hit you either. Oh, there you go. Zako equals non-boss, literally small fry. <laughs> 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 nice. That's awesome. That's uh, cool. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. Well, I mean, we're getting close to the end here. So, is there anything else that you would like to cover before we, or maybe? Yeah, why don't why don't we quickly uh, duplicate her? Maybe we can get her working as an ally on our side. Okay, duplicate and, uh, uh, in in Map Studio. In Map Studio, let me see. Yeah. So we oh, can have, oh, I see. We can team up with Melina, basically like a summon to fight the normal soldier of Godric. Okay, so if, yeah, swap him back in. I need to get his yeah. IDs though. It was C4311 from memory. 4311. Let's see. Uh, oh, but we just need to change that. The model and... Okay, let's see. Yeah, just in the uh, in the file. Uh, C4. There we go. 4311. Yep. Okay. Yep, there he is. The program, I don't remember off the top of my head. But... Okay. Yeah, let's look. Oops. Uh, NPC param... I think he, it's just called Soldier of God, I think. I mean, Soldier of God, Rick. Wait, yeah, actually, so. or is it It was still... a special one. Okay. I think. Let me yeah, search Soldier. We looked at this last week. It, it had a six at the end of the, the ID, I think. Oops. There's Godric Foot Soldier. I don't remember if we duped it and named it better. Oh, Godric Soldier Boss. There we go. Okay. Here we go. It's trying to graveyard, so. So that's the idea we want. That's the NPC param. And then is it likely the same for NPC think? No, it was different okay. from memory. Okay. Blue. Very similar though. Just the last few digits were different. Godric foot soldier. This one? 4006? It's no. 4311. Oh, no. It might just be 3000. Let, uh, let me try searching soldier in case I named it or something. I think something. it's one of those. Soldier of Melina. Uh, okay, 3,000. And how did we... I don't remember how we even determined this. Did we just look at, like... Um, did it have different AI? I don't think it probably, so. Probably. Bosses typically, they have, like, you know, much... They have almost infinite detection radiuses, not radii. So if you scroll through them, you might be able to see which one. It probably doesn't make a huge difference for now, honestly. Mm. Yeah. I just don't remember if we had to pick through each one until we kind of figured it out, or if we had a definitive way of narrowing it down. I don't think we ever found, yeah, I don't think we ever looked at AI last week, so we probably up. never, never mm. figured out which one it was. I copied over the old ID, so. There, param ID's back in place, and think. We'll do this. See if that was it. I don't know. Maybe if people yeah. remember. Uh, It'll probably work anyway. Can you make modify scale to make bosses scaly? Okay. All right. Let's let's calm down here. Um, let's not go too far. <laughs> oh. that, that, that param is specifically for the, you know, the dragon bosses. They scale them up so they have more. Anyways. Uh, all right. Save here. And then, yeah, oh, we let's want... Let's make sure this works again. Okay. Let's do that. And I don't think I changed any params. No, so you shouldn't need to restart the game. Inappropriate activity detected. No. <gasps> there he is. Oh, wait. No, yeah, uh, he's we, in. We me. really want him to hurt us. Hurt <laughs> us. <laughs> wait, did, uh... He does hit us normally. Okay. okay. So he's good. There he's we good. go. He's good. All right. Uh, so, now we want a Melina there. Oops. Let's see if Melina is a bit... Maybe, maybe, you know, Melina just cannot bring bring herself to hurt us. That, that would explain everything. It's, it, it was the war all along. <laughs> Absolutely. We can test that out, though. So, I think if we select the soldier, you can press Control-D to duplicate. It 
I think it did. Yep, it did. Yep, and then we can drag that out and, you know, put this can, this, this can be Melina, so we'll change the, the model and the IDs back to oh, what yeah. we had before. But this time we can just use the, the default, I think, uh, the default NPC param for her summon. Right. Uh, let's see. Small let's get Melina back. Melina tier 11, right? That is the one we yeah. can. Yeah. Yep, that's All the right. one we wanted. Oh, wait. Uh, and how do we get the model name? I don't remember. Just C2180, the first four digits of the ID. Ah, 2180. Away. Okay, cool. Yep. All right. And then NPC param, boom. And then the think. Uh, did she have a... We didn't actually change anything. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. And how is this going to function? Is she going to be active... Only when I walk in? No, that we'd need event scripts to control that properly. Ah, so okay. yeah, she's gonna be trying to kill the soldier <laughs> who will not not fight back. And given her scaling, she's probably gonna kill him in one shot. So. <laughs> well, we, but we'll deal oh, with that. Yeah. that. We'll know it's working at least in that case. Yeah. All right, this can so. be the Melina spawns ahead of you and kills the bosses. <laughs> Perfect. Let me, uh... now. Nah, okay, whatever, we'll just, let's give it a go. Oh wait, I have to, no, I don't need to change anything. No, I don't no, need to quit. Out. To save. Put Melina in the Angie corner. I gotta be fast because I want to try and save and quit. So otherwise, we're gonna have to run all the way back to. Oh, there she is. Hello. She's looking at me. Wait. Soldier of God doesn't notice me yet. Oh, oh. She's following. Oh, she's got her weapon properly now. Yeah, she looks totally different mm -hmm. than last time. Oh, yeah, she does. Ah! <laughs> yes. So it works. She helps. She fights for us. Um, did she get him? I did, I did she get him almost, but I, it, I didn't get the victory screen, so he's still oh, alive. Cool. There you go. Yeah, she was Another, unclicking. Thank you, Ben Scripps, for that. We have to wait for the boss animation to finish. Oh my gosh. Look at this. So, she looks. So that's very interesting. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait. Never mind. I was going to say, you know, Soldier what's... Godric in the front, Melina in the back. But, yeah, yeah, what's happening there? <laughs> uh, I don't know. It just might a just little be visual a, quirk. Yeah, map studio thing. It's only from a certain angle once I get through the fog. Yeah. That's okay. So yeah, this kinda... definitely suggests to me that there was something funny going on with the params before. Because when we used the, de the default params, we got the visual change for the summon. But when we used our duplicated one, where all we changed was team type, we were not getting the duplicate. So maybe it is a, a, a regulation reading issue. <laughs> That's so weird. I don't... Yeah. Can um, we do one more test? Yes. If we just change the soldier's health, just like multiply it by 10 or something. Uh, soldier's um, health? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, and that will help us in testing Melina as well. We're using... if that doesn't work... Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll know that this is probably connected to the survival mode bug as well, if that doesn't work. And that would be great to... Yeah, if you want to, um, like after we have officially concluded this session... If you want to... Yeah, I think... Try. Well, you're sharing, you well, have, I can see your screen. Time. It would be... Yeah, I totally yeah. have time. Okay. I think uh, we'll either figure it out straight away or we'll be eternally baffled. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, so NPC ID, base HP. Oh, whoops. That's Godric the Grafted. My bad. Uh, <laughs> Godric, soldier, boss, stranded graveyard. Okay. Godric was almost very happy. Almost, man. Doomed to... 5,000 HP. There we right. go. And just, and yeah, let's just save this. Save. Restart. Close the game. And. Oops. Uh, mod engine load. All right. Yeah. So if this, uh, if this doesn't work, then the issue is something on, I don't know, something with my PC. And she should have been working as a boss properly. Um. And if we just change the team type in that uh, oh, yeah. 3 4 param, we could, we could do that as well if we wanted. Yeah. We'll call it Hard Morgot Fight Mod. <laughs> Wait. Enemy felled! What? Ah, uh, so. <laughs> Wait, what? Uh -oh. guess, did she kill him before the game? Even no, started? but, I, well, I gave him 5,000 HP, so. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, so either he was already dead and the game remembered that somehow. Oh, uh, maybe. She killed him. I don't think she could have killed him that quickly. Okay, well, you never know. for the ultimate yeah. test, let me just run back. Yeah, uh, sure. 
What was the wildest way to make a new ascended mod? Now these increase the boss's HP by 2600%. Oh my goodness. I guess the only problem here is if I make a new character and run there, as soon as I load in <laughs> Melina, she's going to start bash. Well, she didn't. She wasn't in, a, in aggro radius, so <clears throat> let's see. Lady Lunavipus uh, pointed out the original AI param for the soldier. Yeah, we, we just guessed at it. We weren't sure. Oh, um, okay, 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 okay. I, I didn't think it would make a big difference. Oops. Yeah, he was functioning, it seemed, but uh, let me fix that. I think param... Wait, four, three. Oh, I got the wrong one. Uh, for him, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Three, 3,900, okay. Yeah. Got it. Excellent, file save. Boom. <clears throat> uh, okay. Quick speed run here. So are there any, um, I guess, are there any, maybe we can field some questions from the chat regarding, I guess, what we've learned today. Because we did, uh, what did we, we opened up Map Studio. We dove into there. We looked at the um, the B and D style files that bind everything together, and then figured out how to edit message text, which would be for menus or item descriptions or names and that sort of thing. And we even changed the boss names to Soldier of God, so we got that that working. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Is there anything that that more that you would want to cover in these subjects i mean there's a lot of stuff obviously but um kind of more things along these lines that we should look into maybe next time yeah well, i think now that map studio seems to be working at a you know at a simple level at least for character modifications and things there's obviously a lot you can do there uh there's a lot you can do with params if if we can actually get them to register uh text as well and yeah, those three file types will get you pretty far in terms of basic, I guess you call them replacement or knob tuning mods or, you know, things like things like enemy onslaught will require some event scripting to do. So hopefully when the, within a couple of weeks, we can get some tools out, at least to you, Lobos, and then even if they're not ready for public release yet, we can look at them on, on your stream potentially and get an intro to that because a lot of it works the same way as past games. So. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, and we could also just like into. jump into Dark Souls One and do some event scripting there if it if it's you know absolutely that, that similar, and that oh, would be definitely. available to everybody, right? Exactly. Okay. Yep. So it could totally do that as well. We. But yeah, other than that, I think as far as Elden Ring goes, again, sans event scripting, we're at the point where anything we think up, we have a decent chance of being able to implement. I think for a lot of stuff, it's just you know. Everything that, again, aside from event scripts, everything that survival mod does, also aside from the darkness, uh, we can now do based on what we've learned from these two, from these two episodes so far. That's awesome. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, event script stuff is really going to be really in interesting. <clears throat> yeah, you can do almost anything through event scripts. The big question is just whether the game has the built-in function that lets you check a value that you want to check. Yeah, yeah. So, for example, in event scripting. Unless, again, unless there's some new instruction that does it, you couldn't have something condition upon whether you have enough strength, for example, because there's just no event check that, that handles that. But for most stuff, there is. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, one of the ideas for a mod that really made me think, like, okay, this is a lot, this is probably a big thing that uh, I would probably want to sit down and, like, like work on just because it's a lot of work. It'd be a lot of work. But the whole thing of, um, how realistic do you think is it to have the goal of basically assigning a stat to most actions in the game and then like leveling those stats based on how much you perform those actions? For example, yeah. I'm, I'm using an axe, which is like a strength weapon. Attack 100 times, I earn like one strength, right? Like, you know, a Skyrim style, mm -hmm. the more you use it, the more you, you know, get better at it system yeah like an experience leveling system oh. uh, you could do it but i think that would require some animation sort of hacking or monitoring at least because you'd be looking for certain animations to occur right okay uh, and you know and you'd, you'd be so you'd be doing things like checking what weapon you have equipped and checking when you have an attack animation how's his health looking now uh, let's see she has not done anything to him yet i'll hit him once oops if i can oh, okay he's not He's not health modified. All right. So I, I think that answers it. I think we're, we've been... All these uh, 
baffling moments today have been we've been debugging the survival mod all along <laughs> and we didn't even know it all right well so it's yeah. my fault that these aren't working chat it's my fault um oh, it's, it's, it's someone's i think it's the soldier of god it this, might be this, this only started last time we messed with him i think he's, he's taking revenge he's in my yeah he's jumped out of the game files and is, i don't know what he's doing man all right let me close this for now We'll keep At least we know everything you did in programs was quite simple and should work in principle. Yes. My, my biggest uh, regret is that we'll never know if lumbering was actually doing anything or not. I will absolutely make changes to that and may maybe we can work on some of that today and, and see if we can resolve this regulation bin issue. Yeah, okay, so let's take a look at this. So just, can you go into the mod folder there? Just, uh, yes. That's, okay. wh that's where the, the guilty file sits. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Regulation.bin. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and this this one was created by Map Studio, wasn't it? Yes. But we have been editing it. It says three hundred two. Yeah, three hundred two. Surely we've edited this file since three hundred two. Uh. Um, maybe maybe that's the issue. Well, I I know because I changed the HP probably, and then I had to I started a new save file and ran all the way back to him while we were kind of reviewing. Oh, sorry, sorry, you're an hour behind me. I forgot. Oh yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. Cool. Yep, um, okay, so yeah, this is the file we're editing. All right. Uh, so my number mm -hmm. one, yeah, I think we already tried this uh, when I was trying to help you on stream through chat before. But if we just literally copy pasta, yeah, just put put it into yeah. the UXM unpacked game folder and remove it from this one, so it's not being overwritten. Uh, remove. Okay, I see what you're saying. Um, yeah. So, but given that the soldier just died again, um, we might need another way to check if we're, mm. if, if it's actually being. Yeah, I we could also we could just boost up the um the first boss's health as well. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, that would be a slightly faster check. Okay, so let's see. Um, <clears throat> Scion, grafted Scion, yeah. Boss chap chapel of yeah. anticipation there and base HP eleven hundred. We'll say ten thousand. Wait, no, I'm gonna scale his HP down because he's already got a lot of health that it's like, uh. Yeah, I feel like I wouldn't necessarily notice because uh, you, you hit him like a wet noodle at that point. All right, yeah. so one HP he's got. So if we can run in and insta smack him. We'll remove it from here. We'll put it into the game folder. Do we want to kill him in one hit though. If we need, we might need to test a few times. We just have to go through the character creation again. Hmm. If you kill him, right? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Maybe give well, him like half health. That's probably noticeable with that. Yeah. Okay. Let's give him. Uh, he had like eleven hundred. We'll give him. Oops. Where's the HP? There it is. Thirty thousand weight. Just noticed that. That's interesting. Interesting. Yeah. I'm gonna give him three hundred health. That should okay. be like that's, yeah, four, four or five definitely, attacks. Definitely not one or two hits. Okay. Yep. Created the new one. Cut. Paste. All right. And, and then just you'll... um you'll... yeah move or just rename the one in mod engine uh maybe that that back file i don't know i'll, I'm just, I'll delete the back i'm wondering file. if i'm suspicious of that i'm suspicious of everything well <laughs> i'm i don't even need to load through mod yeah. engine right i can just start gaming off exactly mode. but what i'm you know what i what my paranoid mind says is maybe mod engine is loading the back file instead of the real one or something crazy mm. like that which would probably be vanilla but anyway yeah let's try this see if this works all right let's see and if I mean if this if this change isn't registered in the game, then I don't you know I don't even know where it's getting the vanilla params that's from. What, that's at this what's point. so confusing to yeah. me. It's man, it's, I don't know. All right, let's see. So this is not through mod engine. This is just loading up the game. We're gonna create a new yeah. character. <clears throat> yep. So yep. if this doesn't work, then yeah. I <laughs> almost out of ideas but um if it does work then we can see if it's you know if we can get it happening through mod engine in the worst case you could run survival mod through uxm at least in that case but i tried that too and it still didn't work yeah right that's what's if this so is just weird magically fixed now. verify files from steam and use the new new regulation as a base yeah, I've reinstalled both all of the mod engine, uh, the game entirely. Oh, Foxy just pointed out something here, yeah, very interesting. Oh? If your regulation.bin is from an older game patch, it will load from the save file instead. That's very interesting. That's why, oh, but I also tried save file changes. Like I wiped all my saves and I started a fresh one mm, and uh, it still didn't. That's so weird, but okay, let's see what happens here. Yeah, yeah. 
He should have considerably less health than expected. He does not. So, yeah, like that's... No, he has 500 health, I think, in our... our yeah, okay. uh, Regulation He's bit. definitely got his original health. But rate. we can we can assume we can we can try something based off of that. Yeah. So I, the save file is the only hypothesis I have about where it could be getting these vanilla params from. And that's that we can luckily we can test quickly, so I can just uh, let's see. I have so many backups here. <laughs> um Yeah, so I'm just gonna make a new <laughs> delete this copy. Another copy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, that copy's old. Um, back up. All right. And now it should make Let's a new one. See right. what happens. Should. I guess. Oh, pro it's. I think it does after like the main menu or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Probably when you create the character. Now you. Okay, so it's yeah. It really thinks this is new. Uh, do you remember? Oh, this is what happened last time. Remember. Failed to save uh, game, save data is corrupted, corrupted. And then I think we loaded a backup. And then that fixed it. So, so that, yeah, this, I think the way we resolve this message is probably, you know, depending on how we resolve this is probably what, what's causing the issue. Because yeah, the backup probably. saves, and this is probably related to it detecting a corrupted params. Um, okay. So I could do just, you have, I, I could reinstall from scratch and see if it makes... I need you to can load. verify game files, and that all that sh that should only replace the regulation in file, pretty much. Okay. It, it won't delete all the UXM files or anything. All right, let's see. Yeah, let's see if that works. But yeah, I, I suspect that's um, because you know the the yapt yapt is exporting regulation in a way that the new update might be able to detect. It detect is an older version. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, local files verify. So you're running version one point oh five. It detects you have no save files and you have an outdated param file, so the game's just giving up and not letting you start a new game at that point. I think you need to. Whereas if you have a backup save, it can pull the vanilla params out of that and let people, you know, continue playing with an old param file. It says you need to repatch the exe as well, Grim. Um, oh yeah, if we if we uh, verifying the game file is going to oh. undo uxm's changes, that that only takes a second to redo that. Yeah, and this shouldn't need to. Redownload all the big do you, binder files. Do you need UXM patched if you're just co pasting over a new regulation bin? That's true. No, you wouldn't. Not for not for this particular file. Yeah. So we can we can test this straight away. Verify, please. Oops. Yeah, a lot of lot of data to scan. I wonder. Yeah, I always wonder how this works. If it because you know it's reading these big compressed binder files that are ten gigabytes each. If it's just comparing them to some static. Uh, version that's in the Steam cloud, or if it's decompressing them and doing something. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna be right back as this verifies. One sec. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, we would prefer to only do this through Mod Engine, but I think we've hit the nail on the head. I think uh, this, because that that was what was baffling us last time. We're just like, where are the vanilla params coming from? But I had no idea that the game could put them in the save file if it detects that the the um the ones on disk are out of date. We'll just test if this works though, Matt. Like it, we'll we'll copy in the regulation dot bin and if, if we if we get the changes then then we'll step and do mod engine and restore the old regulation dot bin. Three files will be reacquired. That sounds good. And it looks like it might have done them already. Entertain us, Grim. I can do a, a Vati impression. That's, that's my only trick. Yeah, I wonder what the other three files... Uh, so three files, regulation.bin, game executable, and I'm not sure what the third file would be. Do the Vardy impression? Alright, I'll try. Three files failed to validate and will be reacquired. Local files. That's terrible. <laughs> I've been talking for so long. <clears throat> if there's one boss in Elden Ring that leaves me with a lot of questions, it's the soldier <clears throat> of God. Hi, I'm back. Hey, what? nothing happened. Lore? Is there lore between soldier <laughs> behind Soldier of God? Is that what's going on? Uh, I was doing a Vardy impression. Oh, very nice, very nice. 
Okay, so let's see here. So oh, let's just see if we can get a... Um, should I load in not an off? No, it doesn't matter. No, okay. We saw three files were replaced. So yes. definitely the regulation, definitely the executable, and one other one apparently. Something else. Craft me a save file. How about it? Okay. We've got we've got a save file. Well, let me create, create one. I mean, it should be good. <clears throat> Did we replace the uh, the regulation already? Not yet. No, that was just okay. a, a, a Make sure blank test in. there. Then we'll go grab from uh, the uh, I cut and pasted the. <laughs> it's probably being deleted. <laughs> it has been deleted. <laughs> um, That's all right. We can uh, just open Yapt again and change the health. Oh, yeah. In fact, that might be better because Yapt might preserve the version information in mm. the regulation file, which might have been a problem before as well. Mm. So I might basically have to, you know, the, for the survival mod, just Update regenerate that. that regulation file for 1.05. Interesting. Oh, I think it did work for me Oops. from scratch. Yeah. Going the wrong way. All right, here we go. Uh, Steam. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Ian, this is happening because of what we've done to the regulation file. I think the regulation file is the only one having problems right now. Boom. There we go. Import names. Okay, NPC param. There's grafted scion. Mm -hmm. Okay. Give him 400 health. Yeah. I remember that this number we're seeing, some of you noted that it looked like he had more health than that, but that's because he's also got a leveling special effect applied. Mm. I think it's scaling up that health a bit. Okay. I'll, I'll put like 200. Yeah, because yeah, I, I also noticed, I was like, I'm doing 103 and so it's supposed to have 1100. But regardless, we can compare that to however much damage we do now and see. Exactly. Um, Should be less. That's all that matters. And just before we boot, yeah, do we want to check 320? Yeah, that looks right. Okay. We have a, and we have a backup. an updated regulation file. Right, yeah, we've got see. the backup. Let's see. So if this works, we can move that regulation file to mod engine, um, or hopefully just use the survival mod one in future and restore the backup for the for the game folder. Oops, I declined. Accept. <clears throat> okay. If I'm just care about modding, probably one or the other. I think I'm also care about hacking chain. I have to be proven wrong. Uh, I, when I, I went to FromSoft headquarters for a Sekiro early look. And we, it was like, like maybe six or seven of us had an opportunity to interview Miyazaki. And I don't remember if it was me or somebody else that asked about mods. And they basically were just like, they, they, they can't like comment on them. So... I, I think it's a gray area where if you're you openly accept like the mods happening unless you officially do it as like a feature you know like 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 fallout or something where you have a mod thing like they just they don't want to touch that subject because of just legalities i think too many booba mods that too yeah you know, you know. <laughs> um all right let's get in here Yeah, I think it was uh, Einstein who noted at one point that we are probably very close as a team, like all the modders, to be able to port Bloodborne to PC using the Dark Souls 3 engine. But that is something we would definitely <laughs> oh, would yeah. step over the line yeah. for Sony. So um, <laughs> there are lines the modders won't cross. But just no, knowing that we could probably do it with a you know with a six months of work. All, or something, you, all you guys have to do cool. is you just make make a proof of concept and send it to them and be like, hey, we could do this real quick for you, like. Yep. Send it to Sony, and they'll be like, you know what? All right, f do it. <laughs> if they don't already have plans for it, you know. Uh, don't tempt us. Mm. <laughs> okay. All right, buddy, you better have a lot less health. That looks exactly the same. I... Yep. I, um... Hmm. That is of interest. <laughs> um... Hmm. Uh, I can delete. Do we want to just from here? here? Do we want to? Yeah. Do we want to try deleting the save files one more time from here, just in case? Because they were generated after before um, we edited the regulation, right? 
But then if I try to, if I delete the save files, won't it just give me the corrupted issue again and I have to re-verify? Uh, maybe, but we generated this regulation from 1.05. Um, oh, okay. So it, I it, see what it might saying. work. It, it's, it's a long shot. I've kind of lost track of which file was <laughs> generated when. But All right, save deleted. Oops. Yeah. You might have to delete the backup as well. I think the game will, will use that. Oh, um, I didn't realize that. If if it can't find a normal one. There you go. These games are getting too smart for us. <laughs> so maybe reinstall Elden Ring through Steam on a different drive. I only have one drive. So, and I looked in other locations in case, because I thought maybe I had made like a, a, a copy pasta of Elden Ring to do some modded stuff on the non-Steam directory version. But I even deleted that. That was like for my co-op run with Dist. And I, I deleted that. This is looks like it's... Yeah, so save data is corrupted. So it's the same issue that we're getting. Um, huh. One drive. How did I get here. around this? Yeah. Um, so I feel like I went through this with the update. I think I went through this with the 1.04 update. I remember getting this error. Really? Maybe something has changed with the regulation of format that Yacht just cannot handle right now. And But I, in that case, I don't know how it's been working for me. Yeah, because if I take all the survival mod clean files and try and load them through mod engine, I just, it just, yeah, we have that issue. Try restoring through UXM. Um, I think it probably already verified the, the EXE and re-downloaded it. Let's see, actually. Um, yeah, 317. So it's the... Yeah, that's the verified one. Verified for sure. We tried crying yourself to sleep many times. That doesn't work. Maybe Yap saved the disc bin in its directory and not Elden Rings. Uh, I opened up. We well, can see it's been modified here at 3.20 p.m. That's true, yeah. Yeah. I opened up this bin from that folder, so. Dang. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it, Ichigo says if it's different from the one in the save file, but we deleted all the save files. So. That's true. Yeah, we started from scratch, and yeah, it and doesn't yeah, work. Even if, if if you have a vanilla regulation and you start a save file, then when you update it, it just doesn't even use it. It uses the vanilla one in the save file or something crazy like that. That's what Foxy said, I think. Well, the thing is, Epic Mouse, it's it's not even. I mean, I guess you might have an experience like this when modding, and and you don't know how to track down what's going on. But that's kind of what the Discord's for, and this is a really I don't know what the issue is here, but. Yeah, this is definitely a new new one for me. Yeah, I wouldn't say it's common. Um, very uh, Elden Ring specific as well, I think, because it's being actively updated, which doesn't help either. I'm f uh, I'm not you know I'm not sure that I edited the right grafted scion, but there is only one that says boss chapel of anticipation. It has so, to be that one because it it doesn't ha award you any runes either. I think that's the only one with base rune zero at mm, the top. Uh, wait, where is? Oh, base runes. Yeah, yeah. 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 The. Oh, this one's base run zero, but it's just, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? This, they, we could try it. Yeah. yeah. We'll just that's the it. problem, yeah. There's so many things that it could be, but at this point, try I'm, editing that one as well. Yeah. I'm going to edit them all to one health, okay? I don't care <laughs> yeah. if I auto-kill it. Uh, yeah, that'll, runes, that'll be runes. success. We, we only need to kill it once. Yeah. This one's base runes uh, zero as well, okay? So save. Oh, we have the corrupted save file issue. So I have yeah, to... we'll we'll have to go back to vanilla briefly while um, we uh, get it to generate a save. Yeah, so I need to re-verify again. Uh, okay. Oh, Hot Pocket points out. Yeah, if we if we did something like change a starting class, we wouldn't even need to load into the game to see if it's working. That's fair. Yeah. Mm. Um. Let's see. How would we do that? Learning. <laughs> uh. So yeah, they are in. There's a new param for them. I think it's near the top. Uh, it's Character called... make menu? Yeah. Uh, maybe. Hang on, starting. I made, a, I made a note here of all the new params. I see features base, like gifts. Base character select menu. Oh. oh, base character select menu param. Okay. Oh, closed yeah. network test stuff. Nice. Yeah, <clears throat> so if we edit the Vagabond one. Okay. And... Oh, we the, could change um, the image ID to just like yeah, one of the others. Exactly. So, yeah, okay. exactly. So, so make if we it set look... them like, yeah, set it to seven, then it make should be it the warrior like image. Rich. All right, there you go. Okay. 
Uh, oh, but I suppose it's um, verifying this right now. So uh, this could be a problem that I have the app open with that file open while verifying. Yeah, no, <laughs> I'm going to close it for right now. Because it's going to try and replace that file, so. <clears throat> um, oh, yeah, we don't want to save that yet. No. Yeah, Matt's noting we should use Mod Engine. We we want to use Mod Engine, but it's just, you know, if it doesn't work through UXM, then um, yeah, then it, it's an even yeah. more baffling problem because we're only dealing with one copy of the file right now rather than a replacement one. If this works, we will definitely prefer Mod Engine. Yeah, I, I prefer Mod Engine in every case. It's just I only resorted mm -hmm. to UXM because I knew... I could eliminate mod engine as being, you know, the issue that's causing problems. Okay, so yeah. one file. So let's see if it indeed regulation bin three twenty eight. Yeah, that's a minute ago. Or yeah, and less. you can see the size is back to normal seventeen eighty nine. Okay, so now let me get Yap to open. Yap. Uh, hey, we want to load the game using this vanilla file there first, right? So it doesn't yeah, yeah, stay yeah. corrupted. Get a save file going. It worked for you. You gave Cyan five health and he died in one hit. Uh, you did the one that says boss or whatever. Um, Chapel of Anticipation. Are you using 1.05 again? I assume so. Checking save data. Accept. Accept. Nice. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, I'll make a backup of this regulation. Yeah. Bit. I'm just going to make a new folder here called... Regulation. Well, that, backup, that dot back is already a vanilla. I backup. guess so. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um. So yeah, when we want to restore it, we can just delete and rename the back one. Yeah. Wait. Does this back happen? This back is from Yapt, though, isn't it? But I guess well, Yapt create. It just copied the original file. It's still you can back. see from the size. Yeah. yeah. You can see from the size. It's okay. right. Okay. So All right. We can use that rather than Steam verification if we need to. All right. Let's go, Yappies. Did we boot up the game and create, like, get to the main menu? We got to th pass the main menu, yes. Okay, and I, cool. I could hit new game and everything. Um, so now. Uh, base character base, select menu. Base character select menu param. Uh, does it matter if I... I know, don't even bother bringing in the names. Who well, knows? I don't remember what... Oh, well, it happened again. <laughs> well, we'll see now, I guess. I'm changing it to the uh, wretch image ID. Yeah. So let's see. File. Save. Okay, it saved now we can it. Confirm to the right yeah. spot, and you, you can see that's going to the right spot. Yeah, yep. and it's different. It's got all the names in there now. Can you just open before we boot mm -hmm. into the save file directory? I just want to see the size of that that dot sl two file. Twenty eight. Yeah, okay, so yeah. it could easily have the params inside it. Yeah. Mm. All right. Uh. Yeah, like like I said, I think it's it's something with my configuration, something that happened over here because otherwise, like the mods still work for a lot of other people testing. Um, <laughs> me turning off auto wall recovery. Always got to turn that off. All right, <laughs> let's see. Yes, it swapped now. Okay. Um, that's good. Maybe we wait. What so, does that mean? <laughs> wait, why is it working well, out? It's seeing a new param file. Uh, yes. So maybe now let's try to change Grafted Scion's health. And okay. I think Ian confirmed we were editing the right param. So um, yeah. Okay. So I should, close out. Shouldn't shouldn't be anywhere anywhere for it to hide anymore. NPC param, Grafted Scion Chapel of Anticipation. It's almost what? like the kind of thing you just have to keep asking the game to accept this model <laughs> file, and eventually you just pray hard enough, and it, it works. <laughs> Save. Okay. All right, good. Start game. But so if this works, then what fixed it is the new save file? Even though- Yeah, just some, because I thought we tried this setup already. We, we, had, we had vanilla param, we loaded the first main menu, then we edited it and then we booted up. Unless it's, a, you know, if this doesn't work, I'll just generate 10 completely unlikely new ideas about what's going on. <laughs> but I, so weird. Uh, I, feel, I feel good about this one. 
We'll see. We'll see. Oh. Yeah, Matt says you can use old saves and get them to upgrade to new params because the game does this. Yeah, I think it's only if it detects that the param is also out of date that it seems to use the old one, hmm. maybe. I think, yeah, we just got in a very weird specific state that, um, Lobos used to be in QA, right? This is, uh, I did. <laughs> yeah, right. This is, um, ghosts from the past. <laughs> Now the question is, if we manage to get this working, is there any way for me to like continue with my old saves? Like if it is safe, yeah. So he just died. Yeah. Okay, that's great. So that's good. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'm gonna test now just loading in this regulation from Mod Engine and see if that works all right. We've yep. also got good next step. Other stuff in here. I will replace the backup. All right. Boom. Well, now I'm going to make a backup of this. Regulation backup. <laughs> In the folder. <clears throat> that's how we do it. Yes. What the? Oh, that's a different backup. They have their own backup. Or some... Maybe... The, oh, that's UXM backup, maybe. Okay. Uh, right. We've got these other edits we made. Oh, Soldier of God, I think. And what? Oh, the, the map studio changes. Um, yeah, they, they should be okay. Yeah. We should get, it should be friendly Melina killing friendly. the soldier. Of, yeah, right. Of God. So we'll see. Uh, explains why survival mod is broken. We corrupted that save and then wiped the params with vanilla stuffs. Hmm. I think we'll need a, the coroner to lay out an exact sequence I, of events here yeah. that led to this bizarre <laughs> state. All right, let's see if he still dies in one hit. <laughs> oh, okay, I, well, I died in one hit, almost. Um, well, okay, we can still test and see if, if Melina and Soldier of Godric are the way that they are. Uh, I, don't think, I don't think we expect any params changes with them, though. Uh, okay, and then it's I'll currently... also have four, and I will, I will show you the infinite health bug as it Excellent. works. You need to hit him. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, this was just to demonstrate. Okay. We, we knew this was a risk. <clears throat> Messing with the grafted sign. I forgot that he would already be loaded, so he didn't have to do his jumping animation. So, mm. need some version control. You know what? I'm gonna destroy all the versions after this happens and start from scratch. Cause, <laughs> all right, let's see. <clears throat> when you learn more coding on Twitch than your actual job. <laughs> oh no! Oh, okay. It already pushed me past. So. Wait, didn't we have... Didn't we edit his... No, I guess not. I don't remember if we no, no, ended no. up with any mods well, on him. There's no regulation bin in there, so let's... Let's, uh... Yeah, let's edit something here. <clears throat> Soldier of God... Godric. Soldier of God. Doesn't that... still have these oh, edited help. Godric Soldier. Yeah, that's right, because we oh, lost our names. The, the regulation names. Yep. Okay. 2,000 HP for Excellent. Soldier of Godric. Save. Wait. Which one is this editing? Which one did it open? Mm. Okay. If, hold we, on. if you if you save it, it should it, it'll, it'll tell you which one it's writing over. Okay. So then, if if that's the wrong one, we can um we can fix it. Okay. Put it in game. <clears throat> so, uh, I guess I need to re. I'll I'll put that over in the. Yeah, because we already expect this to work now, so there's no, no there need to is. test it again. We want exactly. to just move it to mod engine. Let's do this. Regulation bin. Put this over here. If we make any more changes in Yacht, we can reopen this mod engine copy as well. So it saves that. <clears throat> yes, exactly. Okay. Um, okay. I think we're ready to test. I think so. All right. Load through mod engine back here launch mod oh the file name is at the bottom of yaps thanks that's a good tip. oh okay nice i've noticed that nice 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 hello fatal fenrir welcome we're still, we're still gonna have to run to him so it's not not gonna be immediate gratification here oh yeah here we go Yes, the Cave of Knowledge. Ugh, tutorials. Ugh, whatever. 
Oh, they're probably gonna you pop just up a few more times. Delete all those tutorials. And That's right. I'm gonna delete go. them. I'm gonna upload to FromSoft servers, and then that'll show them. Just update their their version in Steam. Remove tutorials forever. <clears throat> In the menu, they just reminded me of one funny thing modding has done to me. Uh, for my whole life, I've played these games with camera Y axis inverted. But oh. the debug Dark Souls, it always reverts to, you know, it defaults to uninverted. And I just got sick of changing it. So I, I got used to uninverted and changed my entire. I rewired my brain. Wow. Yeah. Now I play uninverted <laughs> after like 20 years. Did you, uh, did you ever play Flight Sims? Is that why you were inverted? No, I don't know how it happened. Just from, hmm. from Halo 1, I think, way back in the old days. Oh, was the default um, inverted? Ow. Maybe not, but it, just, mm. it felt natural to me when I was young. Um, oh, it's all but, because yeah. of that intro thing where they're like, can you do a, an ocular verification test for me, Master <laughs> Chief, real quick? Yep. We can keep it like that, or if you want, we go back, and you're just like, whatever, I don't know, I want to play the game. <laughs> yeah, it's probably just the first direction I happened to push it. Yeah. Must have a little pilot inside me, but um. Okay, here we go. Yeah. Okay. This is very, very exciting. He does. He's got all the health. I don't know what. Excellent. I honestly don't know how this fixed, but whatever. <laughs> I mean, like. Yeah, just. The, okay. We're so, we're in a terrible, weird state. It's like a meta state, you know, game soft lock. We're in like a meta soft lock. 